This is the grand entrance of the class of 2023 Maseno University School of Medicine. DJ. This is our finalist 2023. As you can see, how do you wetua 2023? Class of 2023. To our PGM coffee Fadali, let's appreciate our doctors. So that we have there. Kila mtu chini, chini. Aya, songa mbele. I want to see all the other doctors in the house. Aya, let's appreciate them to Fadali to our PGM coffee. It has been amazing, amazing number of years at the school. Look at their lovely faces. These are the doctors of 2023. Wanasema? Chini. Now, if you see a doctor that, who can dance, you are told you only doctor queen. Look at their lovely faces. Amazing, amazing doctors in the house. This is the grand entrance of the 2023 class, Maseno University School of Medicine. Amazing doctors, look at their lovely faces. Nice. You look amazing. 2023 class of. The School of Medicine, Marcelo University. Hi, Nassim Smile. These guys are looking amazing. These are our next doctors, yeah? The finalists 2023. Hi, let's make it simple. Let's make it simple. This is the grand entrance of the class of 2023 Maseno University School of Medicine. Let's appreciate them. To a pigema coffee tafadali. To a pigema coffee tafadali. And as we remain standing, I'm giving the finalists time to get back to their seats. I will request us that as we remain standing, I will invite Enoch Muli and Mohammed Sheikh to make the opening prayers so that we can begin officially. Enoch Muli. As we remain standing, as we remain standing, DJ, as we remain standing, I will invite Enoch Muli and Mohammed Sheikh, who will make the opening prayers so that we begin officially. Mohammed Sheikh. Has Mohammed arrived?
So mm -hmm. we will invite uh, Enoch Muli to pray for us as we begin. Good evening, everyone. God is good. Praise God. Uh, this moment, we want to thank God uh, in a special way for being with us uh, throughout this journey. Indeed, it has been because of his grace and his power that uh, we have come this far. So this moment, as we begin uh, this celebration, we invite all of you in a special way to join us as we thank God for this far. Uh, let us pray even as we begin uh, the programs. Our God and our Father, King of Kings, we come before the mighty throne this moment with our hearts full of gratitude. We want to thank you in a special way for being faithful to each and every one of us since the day we began this journey in our year one. And by your power and by your grace, you have guided us all through. And this day uh, marks the uh, final day uh, in, our med in our medical school. It has taken your grace. Thank you for uh, all the visitors, all our guests who, uh, whom you have guided them to this event. And even those uh, who are still on their way, we commit them unto you. May you guide them. We want to commit all the programs before you this moment as we begin. May you make everything successful and may all that we, which we do this day be for honor and glory of your name. Thank you so much for hearing our prayer and thank you so much for making everything successful uh, even as we begin. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, trusting and believing. Amen. Uh, Mohammed Sheikh, are you here? Is he in? Ah, okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Mohammed Sheikh is not here, but uh, I think I will just uh, try my best to uh, represent the time. My name is uh, Abdirzaq Abdin Ali. For this momentous occasion, I don't think I have uh, enough big words to kind of describe what is happening. But, uh, okay, so we want. Shall I do something? You say Amin. Thank you. You may have your seats. Thank you, Dr. Ali. Let's clap for Ali. Uh, even if you didn't. Even if you didn't understand. And that shows you the diversity in the class of 2023. Uh, I believe there were 56. Are you 56 in number? Amazing. So uh, that is well represented. Uh, thank you for praying for us, Enoch and uh, Ali. At this very moment, I will request to invite our next uh, speakers in the interest of time who will give us the opening remarks for this occasion. And first, before I invite uh, O'Neill Wamukota and Dr. Jackton Omoto to come and give us uh, their opening remarks, I just want you to look at the person seated next to you. Look at them and say uh, these words. Look at them straight in the eyes. I will give you the words after you look at them straight in the eyes. Look at them straight in the eyes and say these words. Say where? See Meisha. So finally, we are here. This is the finalist dinner 2023. And I want to invite uh, O'Neill Wamukota and Dr. Jackton to give us their opening remarks. Let's appreciate them as they come. Pick up my coffee. No, 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 no. He's not going to speak because you didn't clap well. Ama, did they do justice? Ah, you repeat. Uh, please clap for O'Neill Wamukota. Thank you so much. And Thank you. Uh, distinguished guests, Masena University School of Medicine faculty, Kenya Medical Association, Kenya Medical Association, SACO, and other partners who have graced this event and who have put in all the support to make this a success. And lastly, my fellow colleagues, the finalists, I'd like to officially welcome you all to the MBCHB class of 2023 finalist dinner. I see we are all happy. Today is a good day for most, if not all of us. 
And today we are going to reflect on the long journey that we've been all through, which we are hoping will end in a good way. And we are happy to be doing it, to be doing it with all of you. So please feel feel welcomed, and uh, yes, celebrate with us and enjoy. I'd also like to send apologies from the associate dean, Dr. Jack Tonomoto. He was supposed to be here, but something came up. Uh, he says congratulations to all the finalists in advance and to all the guests. He says, please feel welcome. Thank you. Uh, we, he deserves a better clap. Thank you, uh, Dr. Wamukota. I, I hope I'm allowed to call the finalist doctors, right? Or you are waiting for your awards before before we can call you that. Uh, but yes, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Wamukota. We want now to hear a few of the remarks from the class representatives. Like we said, uh, I am tempted to ask, uh, who was uh, the most troublesome doctor in your class? Please don't shout. This is, this is uh, who was the most disciplined doctor? Who was that doctor who, who liked, uh, for lack of a better word, quote unquote, entertainment? Who is that? I, I can see some smiles, meaning those doctors are here. So it's lovely to have a diversity cl uh, like your class of 2023. Uh, and we want to invite now your class representatives to speak on your behalf. I hope they will represent you well. And for this, I will invite Kevin Oyugi and Irina Uma, who will speak on behalf of their class. Can we clap for them as they come? To a pigema coffee, tafadali. Na DJ, kama uneza eka ngoma waneza kuja wakijia cheza. No, umeko kitembea. Karibu sana. Thank you very much, our MC. So, my name is... Uh, Dr. Yugi Kevin, <laughs> Makori, uh, pending results tomorrow. <laughs> so, our chief guest, uh, our partners in uh, attendance, our faculty present, and my colleagues. Good. It's not been easy though. You know the challenges of medical school. My issue is that Kimpi Kimpi is But uh, I want to congratulate you all that you have embraced all the challenges and uh, you have come this far. Also, to our sponsors in attendance, I want to welcome you all, uh, feel at home, uh, and our faculty. I want to say thank you to you all. You have been very supportive to us, uh, both academically and uh, enriching our social life. So officially I want to also welcome you all to this uh, very important occasion and to share a care to Okay, thank you very much. At this moment I welcome my co-class rep, Irina Uma, Dr. Irina Uma. <laughs> Uh, where is Dr. Irene? She says that Kama amta mpigia makofi ata kuja hapa And please, uh, DJ Tuweke ngoma ndiyo Class rapper kuja ya kichezi Kidogo tu Tuweka ngoma My darling Would you fly with me International uh, yeah, Let's appreciate Irene Auma Oh, she's standing in for Irene for, for the record, she's standing in for in Karibu. Well, okay, at least. Good evening. First off, I'm not Irene. I'm Karen Muraria. I'm standing in for Irene. So the guests present, the sponsors, lecturers, all protocol staff. Uh, we, are, we are glad to have you here today. So on behalf of NDCHB class of 2023, we are happy. As our variable class rep has said, so being here today, you are very happy, and we are glad to have all of you here today. So 
feel most welcome and celebrate with us. Thank you. We're standing in for Irene. That was very short and uh, precise. And I'll still go back to the question I asked. In this class of 2023, who was the, mo the naughtiest doctor? Uh, in this class of 2023, who was the most disciplined doctor? In this class of 2023, who is that doctor who loved entertainment? Like they have cuts tomorrow, but he's going for entertainment. <laughs> the way you are laughing, I can already know who that doctor was. And it's amazing. And uh, the next segment of this program is going to be very interesting. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Uh, so I want to invite all the finalists. Uh, gentlemen to come in front and as they come DJ to Ekengoma I want to see men dance to the front and please if you don't dance we are going to start again you go back to your seat we, we, we come so I want to invite all the gentlemen who are finalists in the house Ngojeni, Ngojeni Ngoma. nice one and, uh, and I hope our cameraman will be recording this as you come in front you will not have this day again, so please enjoy. Let the gentlemen come in. Nice one. Can you see Dr. Wamugota? Show them. Nice one. Enjoy. DJ Blueprint. Why? Let's wait for them to come. All I do is win, 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 no matter what, what. Got money yeah. on my mind, I can never get it. I'm a step, you're doing a bamba, sir. You're doing a bamba. Everybody hands go up. Hey, showtime. And they stay there. And they stay there. Yeah. Those are doctors. Oh, my son. Class of 2023, MBCHP, Sony University. Sitting on the top floor, what you think I'm doing? Kill a doctor. Hands in there. Ayong goma ina tuangusha, but nisawa. So I brought them on in front here for one reason. These men, as you see them, as gentle as they are. First, the first thing is that they are doctors. Say doctor. Number two, they are gentlemen, and uh, I, I just want us to give them a, a few flowers, and then these flowers will be given. I won't tell them who to give them to, but they know, because they are gentlemen. Men, are you ready? <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, s some of them have spent seven years in, at the university, and trust me, they are not only graduating with MBCHB. Some are graduating <laughs> with a family, and they are going home with the families. I won't say which doctors those are, but at this moment I'm going to give them flowers and they will know what to do with those flowers. So as, as they receive flowers, they will, they will have some music. Please pick one and give the rest. Please pick one and give the rest. I'm sick to take my eyes off of you, especially a bright and move. The way you roll that thing, me wanna roll that thing, baby. Let me take a look. Oh Lord, me want all the girls in the whole world. I know what I'm doing is so wrong. But things no man can focus. We definitely don't give a fuck. She said she only got a girlfriend, and so what? What if I? 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 Oh, 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 oh. As, as the men receive the flowers, I want to acknowledge the presence of our chief guest. I want to acknowledge the presence of our chief guest, Dr. Professor Jana McLeod. Karibu sana. 
So this is the moment that the gentlemen want to show us what they want to do with the flowers. I won't tell them. I will only request the DJ to play music and then they will know what to do with the flowers. Once they are done, I will request them to have their seats. Uh, gentlemen, please go ahead and do the needful. Yes, proceed. You you have less than Remember, I didn't tell them what to do. These are doctors, they know. Give them a few minutes and then we will proceed with the program. I want you to watch keenly what the doctors are doing with the flowers. Look keenly. Amazing.
presented here today. We have with us Dr. Patrick Marwa. I just want to confirm his availability and presence and Dr. Immaculate Opondo, who are our senior lecturers here. Let's appreciate Dr. Immaculate Opondo. Now I know why you have many flowers. Now I know. When I grow up, I want to be like you. You know, you know, I was looking for an opportunity to use this phrase. When I was growing up, I used to say that I wanted to be a doctor. But when I went to Maseno University, I ended up taking medicine with water, not MBCHB. Let's appreciate Dr. Immaculate as she gives us a remarks. Um, thank you very much. Uh, to our chief guest, Professor Jani, Jana McLeod, the keynote speaker, my boss, Dr. Caesar Bitter, our dean in absentia, Professor Stephen Ogendo, all the sponsors of the event, Anesthesiology, and I teach fifth year medical students. I'm seeing we have a very rich program that has been prepared for you, MBCHB 2023 class. And that means my work here today uh, on speaking on behalf of faculty is very simple. And I'm going to wear three umbrellas as I stand here. But before I talk about what I want to talk about, I want to say I'm very grateful for being invited to be part of this auspicious occasion. Uh, I'm really happy. And today I even got out my Sunday best. You can see my head, you know, my teeth are sharp, ready for the dinner. And I even took Eno before coming. So I'm really prepared to be here to the end so, can, so that I can enjoy every moment of this special evening. Um, I'm going to stand here and I'm going to wear three coats. First, as a faculty at Maseno University School of Medicine. Second, as the mentorship coordinator. And thirdly, as a mother. So as faculty, all I would like to say is hearty congratulations to you all who've managed to come to the end. A lot of sacrifice, a lot of hard work, a lot of tears and sweat, plus a lot of challenges. I am happy to have been part of your journey, at least from fifth year. And uh, I'm really appreciative of the hard work, determination that you all put in to your studies and that culminated with the end of your exams, I think, this week on Tuesday. So we are hoping for the best for all of you. You'll know the final outcome maybe from next week after the school board meeting tomorrow. So we wish you well as faculty and you can know and be assured that we have your best interest at heart and we hope and pray that you'll be very good ambassadors for Maseno University. On mentorship, I want to read a quote by Denzel Washington. And he once said, show me a successful individual and I will show you someone who had positive influences in his or her life. If you do well, I'm sure there was someone cheering you on or showing you the way, a mentor. I want to thank all of you students who took the opportunity to be mentored by faculty and others. And I'm sure many of you can give a testimony on how that mentorship program assisted you 
in your academic and social journey. So I would urge you all to continue embracing mentorship beyond medical school. And if you get an opportunity to mentor anybody, then I would say do it wholeheartedly. And then as a, as a mother, I'd like to start by reading for you one scripture from the Bible. So just give me a few minutes to get the scripture so that I read it accurately. And I'm going to read for you the book of Colossians, chapter 3, and uh, verse 22 and uh, 23. It reads like this, You slaves, be obedient in everything to those who are your masters in a fleshly sense, not with acts of eye service as men pleasers, but with sincerity of heart, with fear of Jehovah. Verse 23, very important. Whatever you are doing, work at it whole sold as to Jehovah and not to men. That scripture reminds me of what hypocrites said that whenever the art of medicine is loved, there is also the love for humanity. So I urge you, when you qualify and move on to internship and post-internship, love your work, pursue excellence, and all the other things that you might desire will be given to you. And with those few remarks, I want to wish you a joyful evening and a blessed future in your career and social lives. Thank you very much. Amazing, amazing. Now I know why you have four flowers. And I want to add you one. This is from the MC. Thank you so much. She has spoken about three things as a faculty representative, as a mother, and the third one was as a, as a mentor. Amazing and powerful. Let's appreciate her one more time. And now on behalf of, uh, you know, when a lady speaks, you look for a gentleman, right? To balance the equation. So on behalf of the other lecturers also, I want to invite Dr. Dr. Kelo. He's in the house. Let's appreciate Dr. Kelo. Why are you guys laughing? Is there something I don't know? Is there something I don't know? Let's appreciate Dr. Kelo as he comes. And you see, when you see two lecturers seated together, I don't want to say they're discussing your results. Let's appreciate him. You want to know why they're laughing? Because they have ambushed me. But it's... It's expected. A, B, C, right? A four. No, A four. A four. Anesthesia. I mean, it's, it's, it's so simple. So uh, <laughs> I, I don't have a specific. Uh, after talking after immaculate is, is such a hard job. To the chief guest, Professor Yana, welcome to Kisumu. This is where we hide. Dr. Bita, the, you're there? <laughs> you're giving the <laughs> keynote address. Our sponsors and everyone, good evening. As I walked in this evening, I looked at these faces and I could hardly recognize them. I think in another two, three years, it will be completely different. And it's... It's a good thing that uh, this is how you look like. You remember when you were rotating with me, you always had masks. So I never got to see this, all these beautiful faces. When he asked about the students, there's always that one who likes 
there's always the one I know I'll come to class and probably become before me. And there's the one that I know once I find him in class, everyone is there. You know them. Who is it in this class? Eh? So, congratulations to all of you. It's been a difficult journey getting this far. Sometimes we had to push you. Uh, you've heard of this saying, pressure makes diamonds. Who has ever heard of that? There's a song, actually, by, I think, two artists. Have you ever heard of this? I told you during the rotations that it's not only about reading Ganong, and you also need to know the other aspects of life. Pressure makes diamond. What is the difference between charcoal and diamond? In one word. Pressure. And that is why you guys are going to be diamonds. Because the pressure that you have been through, it's been too intense. Very intense. We can add temperature to it as well, just to, to complete and make it uh, better. So congratulations to all of you as you leave this place and you go to the, as you join us, in a few years' time, you'll be doing exactly what I'm doing here. At some point, I think uh, around, uh, how many years now? Around 20, 20, 30 years ago, I was where you are. So it's just a matter of time. And as uh, incoming colleagues, I also told you this all the time, that you've got to be better than your teachers. Otherwise, you have no business coming to my class. You remember that? So we expect you people to better where we have been. You have to perform better than we have. You have to take medicine to the next level. We are going to be your patients. We are going to be your colleagues in future. Remember the little that we taught you. We gave you a good foundation. What you build on that foundation is up to you. Our role was to create the foundation for you. Some of you are going to build very tall towers. Others might decide to do nothing without foundation. Others will convert it into a flower garden. Whatever you do with it, we have done our part. We have given you the foundation. Build what you want on it. And for you to have been in medical school for six, seven, maybe eight years, you definitely know what it is that you want to build. For those who want to... Uh, this is a bit... Uh, I know I'm among very many surgeons here. I might be roasted. But for those of you who want to come to the A, A4, you are welcome, so that we can also help the other professions to, to grow, because without A, you cannot have the rest. You know, something like surgery is S, A, B, C, until you get to, you can see how far it is. So let us start from the, the nearest, and we move there. Otherwise, enjoy your evening. Wish you well. Have fun. I have noticed that you guys look a little sad today. Can you just cheer up? I don't know. What's the problem? Aguambo, you are the only one who is happy in this whole, all of this group. <laughs> Share the joy with the rest of them. Okay? Otherwise, thank you very much. Enjoy yourself. And like Immaculate said, we are waiting for, for the dinner and we'll be able to interact more. Everything you put your hand go up. Your name go open doors. Amen. You self go be a boss. Amen. 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 Everything you put your hand go up. Your name go open doors. Amen. You self go be a boss. Amen. 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 Every hustler getting paid. Where the hustle go come to pay. Your own enough. I'm confusing me, boy. Uh, that is. Uh, sure. Like you ambushed. Uh, one, two. Thank you so much, Dr. Kelo. That was amazing. And we really appreciate you. One, two. Mic check. Testing. Sound testing. Uh, Dr. Kelo said you don't look happy. I want you to prove him wrong. Look at your neighbor. And give them the best smile you got. Just give them the best smile you got. But Dr. Kelo, I know why. You know dinner comes last. If we started with the dinner, there will be some smiles. So uh, this very moment, after we are done with our lecturers, I want to, I want to invite, before I go on with uh, the program, 
one of our sponsors who will speak a little word and then we proceed from there. So KMA Sako, are you ready? Ebu Goma. This is how Sako people dance when they have your money. See, see, see how they dance when they have your money. And then when they explain the housing levy, you don't understand. Welcome, Karibu San. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Vitali Sogola. I wear two hats today. First, I am a dentist. I'm in the D, at least I'm closer to A, and far off S. And secondly, I represent Kenya Medical Association Circle. I think I would not do justice if I didn't recognize that you guys are very elegant today. And secondly, is that I've been in many functions, and despite the fact that it started late, which I think is beyond you, you've been very keen on observing time. I've been to a number of universities addressing finalists, and I like the order. I don't know whether it is a culture from the school, or it is a trend by this lot. Whatever it is, congratulations. I would speak to you on many fronts before I come to the circle, because I've been a doctor, I've been a student, and I've experienced it. Many years back, I graduated. And when I was a very young boy, one time I was asked to attend my elder brother's graduation. And I kept telling my family members, why are we congratulating him? He's, it was for his life. Until the day I finished medical school. It looked like it was a big achievement. For I always say, to be taught to read, to remember, to master, and to pass, year on, every other year for close to 16 years, is no mean feat. So whatever happens, when the results are out, you've done a great job for yourself. And you need to be happy, and you need to celebrate it. So whatever the outcome, you're not a failure, you've come a long way. Secondly, is that you're coming into a medical career. I do know that in this era, I, has, I once wore the heart of a unionist. I was once in Kempidio as an official. I do know that you're coming into a career that is at a crossroad. You look ahead, you see your colleagues having not started internship, or you look at your colleagues who are doing internship, at the end of the internship period, they have no job. Worry not. Trust you me. You are in a good career. Medicine is one of those few courses in this life that gives you a skill. There's a common joke that are you earning from your craftiness or are you earning from your skill? It is only in medicine of course, there are others that the bulk of you will earn from what you studied. I am currently reading a book by some entrepreneur. And he says that one of the things the mother kept telling them, that in the journey of life, learn a skill. That if this country were to be closed and you found yourself in Somalia or in any, any other country, and you could not carry your papers, if you are challenged as me as a dentist to extract a tooth, I would tell them, give me that first step, I'll get that tooth out. So on that background, irrespective of what you see in the medical world, you're in the right place. And nothing should shake that faith in you. Secondly, is that as you finish medical school, because now there's no guarantee employment, you would seek different fields. It is okay for you to seek to be a specialist and there's nothing wrong with it. It is okay for you to seek to get into the research world, to come to teach, to go open a clinic, choose the path you desire. But every path has a catch. You will be given the power to read and you wonder why you're being given the power to read 
on your graduation day. Because now you're going to learn each path you desire and pursue it. So if you desire academia, feel free to pursue it. If you desire uh, being a specialist, feel free to pursue it. I run a clinic. There are people who've done business. Sometimes you look at the glamour and you feel that, oh, I don't want to go back to school and be the specialist. We need specialists and it is also rewarding. The other thing that I would want to tell you is that it is very difficult when you become a doctor to accept that I don't know sometimes. Do not kill yourself as you go into practice. You're probably number one ever since you started schooling. You're number one in primary all through. You're number one in high school. Of course, when you come to medical school, then things level out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We met in medical school, you know, we find people who would never be number two their whole life. Of course, when the first physiology results come out, and you wonder, are these results or these are calling calls, calling rates? But it is not one of the things that is accepted in our society as a doctor that sometimes I don't know. It is okay for you not to know. It is okay for you not to be the best. The key thing is you should endeavor to improve. As you go into internship, go learn the skill. When I was going into internship, you know, I was so worried about so many things. On one hand, we wanted to buy cars. On the other hand, we want to do locum, you want to stay in the best neighborhood, you want to go clubbing. And here you are waking up during internship and you have a case. You read it in books, it looks like it, but in reality you don't know whether it is it. Sometimes you may not know. If you do not know, please ask. It doesn't hurt. I call Steve Okello sometimes and ask him, how do I manage this? You know, it could be the lignocaine that I inject every day. But he knows better than I do in some aspect of it. So feel free to ask and endeavor to improve as you go through your journey. I'm not going to talk too much, but I'll come back to why I'm wearing this shirt. As you graduate today, you're going to go into life. And as a medic, you're going to have some facets of your life. The first facet of your life are your classmates. There are people here you will never meet for the rest of your life. Trust me. In dental school, you're only 28. There are people I've not met to date. But the advantage now is you have WhatsApp groups. Please keep in touch. Life has its problems. Have a social network. The first good social network that understands you is your classmates. Professionally, you'll belong into an association. And I believe somebody will talk about Kenya Medical Association. For you to keep tabs, you know, with the skills. There's new improvement, somebody comes to talk to you. It is okay. It is a good thing to join those associations. It is not for the elderly. It is for us to keep touch and learn from each other. If you land in employment, of course, you'll belong to a union. And the KMPDU will come in handy. I'm sure that you're so aware about. Then, there's the money bit, which is now the finances. You don't have to want to be rich to save. Saving is an art you start early. So as doctors, we have a circle that is specific to doctors, which is Kenya, Kenya Medicalization Circle. A circle helps you save your own money and borrow against it. But because I'm saving, Dr. Bita is saving, Dr. Kelo is saving, sometimes Bita has no idea what he wants to invest in, but I have an idea. So I go borrow his money to implement my idea. So I'll need to ask Peter to guarantee me. Circles exist, but KMA Circle gives you the leeway that if you met me as a doctor, 60% of it have trust about you. So I'd guarantee you. So I'd beseech you to join KMA Circle. As a starting point for you who are joining internship, there's a loan that we're able to give you because you know when you join government, you're not able to earn from the first month. It will take you some months before you get your pay. Before, we've been giving an amount of 50000 You have to pay it within your internship period. But now it's been increased to 100000 It is a bullet shot to help you start life. But more importantly, when people live out here, you know, normally it's very easy. Insurances will approach you. Banks will approach you. Take a loan, buy a car. Take a loan, do this. 
But the circle will not give you money first before you save. The good thing about it is that you're learning the art of saving from the word go. You get the point? We will let you save first before we give you the money, except for the internship loan. That one will give you purely based on you getting your, your letter of appointment from the government. I was being reminded actually that Afia House is very close to KME offices. So if you get your letter and you feel you need the money, you can always pass by, get the letter and sign it. Of course, it also teaches you to be diligent so that when your boom comes, don't disappear. Because later, once, once they guarantee you, I will look for you so that it's not deducted from me. But more importantly, it teaches you to save. One thing I tell people is, by and large, there's never windfall in life. Each person is born believing that I'm the best, and someday I will earn some big money. I have come to accept there's no windfall coming your way. It is the little step, it's the little habit of putting in some 5,000, 10,000 consistently over years that builds in a compounding interest that would help you have the money you desire. So should you, come, you need to come back to do your master's in Maseno, you'll be an adult, you can borrow against it and save. That is my plea to you that as you seek to start internship, save early enough. The reality also is that your life is going to get more expensive every coming year. As you start, the expectations on you now is probably not even a quarter in five years' time. So if you learn to start saving early, by the time you know, build more and more expenses in your life, you'd have had some key money that you've saved that can help you achieve your dreams. If you desire to do business, use it. If you want to go back to school, use it. I don't want to bore you like I'm making a lecture. But if you've forgotten everything that I've said, remember to join the circle. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, that is a uh, uh, dentist. He has said very few words and... Vitali Sogola, we are grateful for your words of wisdom. And uh, you can realize when you were speaking, everyone was very silent. Did you realize that? Very silent. I don't know if it is because they are hungry or because they were getting everything you are saying. Thank you so much for reminding us that uh, it is time to improve, even after this, yeah, as a finalist. Thank you for reminding us that uh, it is a good culture to save, especially in this current economy. Uh, you've reminded us that uh, the moment these finalists get out of this place, their responsibility becomes even more. Thank you for those words of wisdom. And now to bring in our next speaker. And uh, just to confirm that you are all still with me. Finalists in the house are who? Huh. That one is for people who are very hungry. Finalists in the house are he. Okay, finalist in the house, ABCD. You know, I don't understand. I thought A is for Apple. Kumbe, this place, it is different. So I want to just invite uh, our next speaker, who is going to be from also Kenya Medical Association, and also a, rep a representative of uh, the Young, young doc Doctors Network, yes. And I want us to put our hands together for Dr. Bruno Okal. Let's clap for him. Come slowly, that daddy comes slowly. Put that music. You are coming with speed. I thought you are going to hit me. Karibu sana. Good evening. Good evening once more. Uh, as young doctors, we don't walk alone. I'm here with uh, two of my colleagues. Dr. Sheila. Kindly, please come over the two of you. They are better dancers than me, so you can play the music. <laughs> so uh, before I speak on behalf of KMA, that is the Kenya Medical Association, um, we'll have some words of wisdom from uh, an alumnus and uh, Dr. Tari. Thank you, Dr. Kal. Good evening, everyone. My name is Dr. Esperancia Nasimiu Kapanga. I am a medical officer intern at uh, KCRH. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for inviting us. Uh, I was to give a 
word of wisdom on internship, but I think Dr. Vitalis has done a really good job telling you guys the take home message that I was still going to give you about internship. Go into internship knowing you don't know, you don't know everything and be open to learn. So instead of giving you so many words that will um, take you through internship, let me tell a short story that each of us might learn from. There's a book called The Alchemist that I love to read every few months. Um, I think it's a good guide for life. And there's a story in there about a shopkeeper who sent his son to see a man who was considered one of the wisest in his region of the world. So the boy went to the palace and he found a really, really long line and he waited for so long because obviously if he's the wisest man, many people want to hear what he has to say. So the boy waited for about two hours before he had his opportunity to talk to the old man. When he finally got the opportunity to talk to him, the old man told him, um, please be patient. Uh, I still need to talk to a few people before I talk to you. But in the meantime, take this spoon. And then he put two drops of oil on the spoon and he told him, walk around the palace and see what I have here. So the boy went around the palace, going upstairs, downstairs, through the gardens, uh, while still holding the, the spoon with two drops of oil. He had been told to make sure that oil doesn't spill. So when he finished the walk and came back to the wise man, the old man asked him, okay, so what did you see in the palace? Did you see my carpets that have hung on the walls? The boy hadn't noticed anything. Did you see the flowers in the garden? Nothing. Did you see the waterfalls in the forest? Nothing. But then the oil was still on the spoon. So the man told him, okay, now go back and make sure you see all those things and still carry the spoon with you. So the boy went and this time he looked around, he saw the waterfalls, he saw the gardens, he saw the paintings, he saw all the wonderful things that are there in the palace and he came back a second time to the wise man. Then the wise man asked him, did you see uh, the beauties of the palace? And the young boy said, yes, I did. I saw all the flowers in the garden, I saw the tapestries on the walls, I saw the paintings. And the old man asked him, but where's the oil on the spoon? And the boy looked down and noticed that the spoon had no oil. It had all spilled because he was paying attention to everything around and forgot about the spoon. So the wise man told him that in life, remember to enjoy everything that is around you, but do not forget the two drops of oil on your spoon. So think about that as you go into your practice. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Dr. Sheila Okal and I'm an alumnus of Masena University. Uh, two years ago, we were in the same position. Um, congratulations. I know most of you, and I'm very happy for you. And the only thing I would like to tell you that when you go out there, do not second guess yourself. Um, I realized that coming out of Maseno University is such an advantage, because uh, people ask you, which university are you from? I'm from Maseno University. There's a reputation out there. They give an employment and they discuss. We want to see how good they are. We hear they are good. And uh, when you're employed, you're given like, people give you three months probation or two months probation. But I assure you, by the end of the first month, you feel appreciated. So go out there with your confidence. When you're not sure, ask. Siki chuangumu. Confidence. Go out there with your confidence. When you're not sure, ask. But then I know Masen University has done a good job. I'm confident in myself. My colleagues out there, I've heard about them. Their confidence has led them to places they never believed they would get to. And uh, in the word of God, uh, the book of God, it's written in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, all through to 13. For I know the plans that I have for you. They are plans of prosperity and to give you a hope. The Lord is not sending you out there to fail. So go out there with the Lord, go out there with your confidence, go out there with your knowledge and your skills. Congratulations once again. Congratulations. So um, my name again is uh, Dr. Bruno Okal. I'm uh, here on behalf of uh, uh, Kenya Medical Association. At Kenya Medical Association, we have uh, different committees. There is a committee that is specifically dedicated before I continue, allow me to recognize uh, uh, the chief guest, Professor Jana McLeod. She was my mentor during internship. I interned under uh, her supervision. It was a good job. Thank you so much, Prof. Uh, so um, in our KMA, we have different committees. Um, and uh, one of the committees is uh, dedicated to the interests of uh, the young doctors. The fields 
may be smooth. The spills may be uh, murky as well. Sorry about that. Uh, but at the end of it, there's light at the end of the tunnel. I will start us off with uh, the words of uh, one of the speakers here who quoted um, Denzel Washington, show me a successful individual and I'll show you, as I paraphrase, someone who he has been working with. And that is the mantra of Kenya Medical Association, working together for the greater good of the doctors. So um, if you walk alone, definitely you will get there, but maybe slowly. But if you're working with others, they'll help hold your hand. After internship, um, there are over 135 specialities that we need to get into. How do you know which one do you need to get into? Start with the end in, in mind, but also start with a broad base. And how do you get to get this broad base? The Kenya Medical Association offers you a very broad and rich network of individuals who have gone ahead of us. They have experienced it. They have learned the skill. They have it in their hand and they are able to perform and they are able to transform you into that trusted uh, healthcare worker in whichever field that you'd like to practice in. So trust yourself, trust your profession, trust your practice with the Kenya Medical Association. Our current uh, president is uh, uh, Dr. Simon Kigondu. I don't know if there's anyone who has heard of Dr. Simon in here. Oh, old guys. <laughs> the assumption is usually that KMA is for the old guys, Dr. Beater and the likes. But you see me here. When I was walking in, uh, one of the uh, graduates, if I may say so, asked me, are you in year three or two? <laughs> so we all belong to KMA. KMA basically provides for you guidance as a, a young doctor. Uh, as I've said, the American Medical Association uh, estimates that we are having over 135 specialities. That is not to include the sub-speciality. So as a young doctor, which door are you going to open? And how do you know the door that you need to open? It is easy to know the door that you need to open only if someone is there to offer you the guidance. And such mentorship is freely available in the medical association. So uh, we believe in networking. We believe in holding hands of the younger professional and working together with them. And as the young professional of this nation, we have a lot of success stories which we cannot tell in this forum. But I'll mention one. Um, Dr. Masi Wanjala, who is one of the young doctors in uh, uh, the KMA, YDN uh, network, is uh, the secretary for the Young Doctors Network in the entire world. So you can emerge right from here into KMA to the World Medical Association. So it is possible just step into the right um, association to develop you. Do not reinvent the wheel. Walk with someone. So how do you join KMA? Um, we have a very active website. Uh, go through the website and align yourself to the annual subscriptions. As per that website, you'll be guided accordingly. And then from there, you can uh, contact KMA, YDN committee, or the leadership to join. If at all you don't know anyone uh, from the KMA, YDN committee, you can contact the class rep, uh, Dr. Dr. O'Neill, I, I got that right, for my contacts, and then we'll see how to connect you with the next person in the leadership of the association. So uh, and in the Young Doctors Network, we are saying do not reinvent the wheel. Maybe there's something wrong about the healthcare financing in Kenya, and you're having much interest in that area. Do not reinvent the wheel. Join the association, tag yourself to the people in the association, and then they'll guide you, they'll walk you through how policies are done, how policies are made, how you can change A, B, C, and D. You may have that idea, but if you're not in a professional association, it is very difficult for you to 
to develop that idea into a holistic uh, policy that will be able to change uh, this nation. So do not reinvent the wheel. You have an idea, come to us. We'll help you to shape that idea into something that is worthwhile. So uh, with that, uh, congratulations to all of you. See you at the KMA, YDN. There's a lot of functions that we have lined up for you, specifically for you as you join internship, as you do your balloting, as you select your internship center. Uh, personally, I interned under uh, Prof. McLeod, and uh, um, interning there really opened up for me a number of opportunities. So be very careful on how you select your internship center. Welcome to KMA YDN. Congratulations. You, you didn't. Please do it in a better way. I also wanted to ask you, which year are you? Uh, thank you so much, Bruno, and for bringing to us the fact that we need to start with the end in mind, right? So as you, as finalists are here today, I know they are already thinking on internship and, you know, and uh, you've reminded us to trust uh, the profession that is a doctor. And just like I said earlier, I... I also took medicine in Maseno, but with water. Uh, you've also reminded us the power of networking. And thank you so much for uh, talking to us. Now, I just want to do an icebreaker because I can see some energy is just running through the window. I want to bring it back. And just like we did with the men, this, this microphone is too low for me. One, two, mic check. One, two, mic check. Yes, better. Thank you. So I want to request all the ladies, if you received a flower, because after this I will invite one of our sponsors, that is the ham, 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 that one. After the ladies, I just want to request all the ladies, if you have a flower, you're also going to go round. You see the way men went round, but you're not going to give a flower to a man. You will maintain your flower. Because I want you to just go round, and I want the cameraman to show your faces. You know, we are live online, Yeah. So as an icebreaker, the DJ will give us a song. All the ladies, please, uh, I'm careful not to mention, but all the ladies, please be on your feet. Please be on your feet. If you have a flower, if you don't have, I will give you. All the ladies, Tafadali, I request that you stand up. We want to do the honor. One, two, mic check. Yeah, it's okay. All the ladies, we will put some music for you. And if you feel you want to join them, it's okay. If you're a gentleman, it's okay. We know some of you have been here for seven years and you have graduated with, with your degree plus another degree. So it's okay. So DJ will give us music and then we will have our ladies go round. Just one round, just one. And we will sit and we go on with the speeches. Are you okay? I know if you are seated, you are a man. If you are seated, you are a man. Aya, DJ. Hello, just come, just come. You are number one. Ah, okay. If you are seated, you are a man. Now, I think I was in the wrong profession. If all doctors look like this, look this and again. Awesome. I can see our chief guest has joined them. Our chief guest has joined them. Amazing. Nice one. Nice one. Doctors look like this. Hey, you know, go fit in my shoes. This doctor ladies are looking amazing. I am in the wrong profession. I am changing my profession from today. I am going to be called Doctor Nelson Asira. 
Amazing photo for Thank you so much. Mic check one, two. Sound testing, sound check, one, two, sound check, one, two, thank you so much, thank you, one, two, mic check, thank you so much, our lady doctors, thank you so much for honoring us, and uh, gentlemen, I hope you're still with me, pado mkona mimi, gentlemen, na nilikuwa ni mewawon, so at this very moment, one, two, check. At this very moment, like I said, we are going to invite now uh, the Hamptons a representative. And I think uh, uh, Dr. Patricia is here to represent them. I want us to put our hands together as we welcome Dr. Patricia. Let's appreciate her. Karibu sana. Mweke ngoma just dance here. We want the camera to see you. Karibu sana. Yeah. No matter what happens, baby girl, I'm gonna love you. DJ. Sometimes they're still, you know. Hey, hey, oh. Oh. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Patricia Nalianya. I work at Hamptons Hospital, and I'm so honored to be here tonight. Everyone is looking beautiful. There's so much brightness in your faces, and it tells us that the future is bright, and the future is here. Uh, so uh, my management sends greetings to you. Hamptons Hospital is in Lunza, Butere, sub-county of Kakamega County. And uh, it's uh, a 5,000 bed capacity hospital that uh, started operations in 2019 and it's still expanding. And um, we are glad to associate with the Maseno University. Uh, we have been able to, we have been able to do great partnership with you. We had a symposium last year on patient-centered care. And I can acknowledge that uh, the symposium was fruitful because currently our staff are putting into practice uh, patient-centered care, and it has greatly uh, contributed to patient retention and satisfaction. Uh, so today I'm here to just tell you that as you get out there, consider Hamptons Hospital as a potential employer, because there is so much space for every doctor out there. Let no one tell you that there is no employment. We've been talked to about skill, I know we have, we have amassed a lot of skills and expertise throughout the years. And as we get out there, let's be ready to change the world. Let's be ready to impact lives. And uh, let's be ready to partner. We cannot walk alone through this long journey of life. Uh, through great partnerships, we will realize great potential and we'll be able to impact lives even more. So uh, currently, Hamptons Hospital is working uh, with the HP company and we are going into the digitalization and we are venturing into telehealth whereby we'll be having tele, tele booths and our patients will be able to get uh, medical attention remotely without necessarily going into to maybe a, a, a medical facility and we are looking forward to having all of you come on board so that we can work together. So there is so much space out here. As you go out there, wherever life will plant you, may you bloom. Thank you so much. Love you, love you
Thank you so much. That is the Hamptons Hospital. Thank you for reminding us that there is job, there is work. After this, there is work for all of us. Thank you. I want to also go straight away into, because of time, one of our guests uh, sent her apologies, and that is Dr. Aida, unless there is a representative that has been sent. Is there a representative for Dr. Aida? No, that means that we will go straight to Kisumu Specialist Hospital, who is also one of our sponsors. DJ, we want to see how specialists do it. I saw one of their videos online. Let's see, let's see it live live now. And DJ, how did you know? That was the song they danced. Please, uh, let's, let's appreciate them as they come. This is how they do it. Good evening, everyone. Good evening again. Congratulations to all of you. You look amazing. Yeah, it really reminds me of our time, those days. Yeah, and um, I'll just start uh, by um, acknowledging our chief guest, uh, Professor Yana McLeod, and our keynote speaker, Dr. Bita, who is also my mentor. Thank you very much. It's good to see you. Um, and all protocols observed this evening. My name is Dr. Jane Nandwa Mapesa. I'm representing a uh, Kisumu Specialist Hospital, which is an amazing facility uh, located at Riyadh, just up the hill. Um, as you can see, it's a specialist hospital, which means we deal with literally everything. I would like to exaggerate like that, because um, I am representing my facility. Very proud to be a resident medical officer there. Before I continue, uh, I'd just like to acknowledge uh, the presence of my colleagues. Kindly just stand and wave. All of you, just stand and wave, please. Thank you very much. Those are my colleagues at the facility. Yeah, so um, this evening I was asked to... Okay, I wasn't given like any specific topic to talk about, but I was informed that I am needed as a young doctor to talk to other young doctors who are coming to the field. So I'm very grateful and honored for that opportunity this evening. Um, this evening I've had a lot of uh, speeches. It's very daunting to speak uh, just before like very eloquent people. I found Dr. Immaculate Opondo speaking and I was like, wow, so I'm supposed to beat that. Um, then there was Dr. Okello, who is also my senior colleague at Kisumu Specialist. I'm very honored also to speak after you. And I'm very humbled as well to have this opportunity. I will not um, say a lot about, because so much has been said, and all of those points are very valid, but I can talk to you as a young medical doctor and I can also talk to you just from my experience and the lens in which so far in this practice I've found. So I could tell you my story, it's a very long and grueling one, so I will not bore you. But medical school was <laughs> a very treacherous journey, I dare say, because it is pressure, like Dr. Okello said, a lot of pressure. You don't have so much fun like the others, don't you? We all wanted to party, but did we have time? Mm -mm. None of us did. All we had were discussion groups, studying, the anxiety before exam, and then that relief, and then you just go sleep after the exam. You don't care, you'll think about the results later. That was seven years or six. Uh, I studied in your end, so it could be seven. I don't know. Yeah. So I did get friends. I'm talking about this because it's going to be very important. Um, 
about the points I'm going to mention later. I had friends that I studied with. There were seven girls, very proud of where they are right now. Um, completing the last OSCE, like you guys did, was one of the best feelings I've ever had in my life. I remember I walked with my friends and we became like children. So we went to an amusement park and we did those banana rides. We were like, wait, med school is over. <laughs> And it was fun because we never got used to, used to do that. So we, we were like, hey, we are going to get that money. Our lives are going to change. We'll never eat in the mess again. We'll just be eating at Sarova. You know, that, that's what we used to say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but what awaited us was a rigorous internship. And I'm glad that my colleagues have mentioned it. It was very rigorous. You thought med school was difficult. Ah, there is internship where you are expected to learn and also to be a doctor. So decision making. Uh, so today I'll come here to tell the truth. So I told myself, go there and be a herald of uh, truth, but also don't thwart them so much. Be a beacon of hope that despite everything, these are very smart people that are going to survive because that's what we do. Medical school makes you be able to survive. Diamonds are not only pretty, they're pretty tough, yeah? Yes. So I intend to highlight in my speech um, the challenges and the opportunities once you walk out of here as doctors. And I'm very positive that you're going to be doctors. I've been told that your results are not yet out. I know that anxiety, but I'm praying for you. So there's the story of the internship, which I've mentioned. It's rigorous work, but be good at it. It's the only opportunity you're going to have to learn skills like Docs mentioned. You're going to learn skills that will help you as a person, and also as a doctor, did I tell you that I almost quit that internship? Hey, I used to cry. My parents would always be at my house every evening. Like I moved out of the house, but my parents are there. Where is she? She's in the bathroom crying. So my sister was with me. So it was difficult. I broke down several times, even embarrassingly in a ward round once. So I decided I'll tell you the truth because that's what happens, okay? Yes, but you'll also learn so much. Within week one, I, I, was, I was started with maternity and I started with night shift. So I don't know what to do. I did OBS gain in fifth year and that was it. So now I have mothers coming in. I'm so scared. I don't know what to expect. And then C-section, yay. Within week one, I was doing CS. You think you don't have it in you, but you do. I want you to have that courage inside you. You can do anything. That's what Maseno has, has empowered you to do. You will doubt yourself, but have confidence. You'll manage. If we manage, so can you. So despite the minimal resources and crazy working hours, it will be exhilarating to learn so much and to have confidence. The second challenge that is coming, the tarmacking that we've been told, yes, there are jobs, but we need to be honest with our junior colleagues. It can be really difficult to get a job. I took one and a half years to get a job. Mostly I did locums, yeah? But eventually, uh, God opened ways and you get a job. There is that challenge out here because Medicine, it's not like what used to be there before. It's at a crossroads now. It's daunting to get out there knowing that in, after internship, you're not sure what is going to happen. But there are opportunities. I'm talking about the challenges, but I will expand on the opportunities, which I, is a very important thing to talk about as well. So um, the last thing I'm going to mention that would be 
a challenge is postgraduate opportunities or opportunities to further your career. We all wanted to be something when we grew up. I wanted to be a pediatrician. Eventually, Dr. Bita swayed me. Yeah, so now I want to be a surgeon. I didn't realize before leaving med school that getting such an opportunity was tantamount to scaling mountains. Because we would think it's obvious, but then you'd have to think of how competitive it is. We were told to start thinking of the end now, like have an end in mind now, okay? That's very important. Think about the fee issue, and I'm glad at least we got something about saving now, because those are things that are going to matter in just a few years, okay? So there's that issue. And then if you're hired by counties, there's something called being released by the county to go and do postgraduate. So that's, those are some, and it can be quite hectic, so those are the, some of the challenges you're going to be, to be facing out there. And it should be upon us as your senior colleagues to tell you the truth of what is there, what you're going to face so that you can brace yourself, be confident and know that this is what I'm, I, I'm going to go through. Once you have that knowledge, it becomes very easy to tackle hurdles. What opportunities are out there? As I said, for internship, you're going to learn skills. You're going to make yourself marketable by being the best that you can be out there. During this time, I know it's very rigorous, but start thinking of how to make yourself marketable by doing short courses. These things like ACLS, BLS, public health courses, they're everywhere nowadays start doing them. Those are some of the opportunities that you're going to get. And trust me, they are going to make a difference. The other opportunity that I wanted to highlight, I'm not sure if anyone has mentioned it. My apologies, I did come late. So maybe I might repeat a thing or two. Consider other opportunities beyond Kenya. I know we are taught here and we'd like to give back to our society but global village now we are in a global village start thinking about possibilities of also moving okay when i was finishing my um my medical school and internship it's so surprising that that never came up at all yeah that we were never told about any other opportunity. So we automatically thought that after an internship, we'll just get immediately absorbed. But the world is changing now, and the world needs doctors. And aren't you the best that there is in the world? You are. You are, and you're smarter than most doctors, I dare say. Kenyan doctors are very smart. We go through it and we learn so much and we are so skilled. And remember the world wants that. I'll encourage you by just giving you a few steps about how to go about it. I learned this almost two years after internship. I wish someone told me earlier. And so I will tell you now. Maybe during your internship or just before you're absorbed or uh, for the internship, consider doing the IELTS, IELTS exam, it's an English exam, yeah? So this exam can give you various opportunities. One, you can go the Canadian route, you can go the Australian route, you can go the United Kingdom route. I know we are very patriotic, I am, and I do serve my patients diligently, but it's important to open your eyes to these opportunities. Once you've done this IELTS, I think currently it's even available in Kisumu. You can consider during your internship, you're already gaining knowledge, so you, are not, you won't be rusted, yeah? So you can consider doing the UKMLA, uh, UKMLA exams that have been changed currently. These are exams that give you competence to, to move to the UK or 
you can have other exams like uh, to move to the to Canada, Australia, the United States because we are children of our parents and I know some of you are going to be like the sole um sole uh, caregivers to our parents and like we are everything to our parents and we want you to get those jobs wherever they are. So if anyone of you would like to know the processes, you can ask me. I've done uh, several seminars as well with regards to this and I am very happy to share with you. You should be allowed to get the opportunity wherever it is. The other thing that I'm very uh, diligent about currently is financial literacy and I'm glad my colleague talked about it. When we were in medical school or leaving, I think we were never taught much about financial literacy. So you wonder where all the internship money goes. It's like boom. And you look back one year, you are penniless. You don't know where the money went. You don't know, but it's significant amount of money that's ideally supposed to give you some stability as you start off life. So I would encourage you to take to look at uh, opportunities to learn about financial literacy. Circles are a good thing. Learn on emergency funds, creating your own emergency funds. Learn about investment opportunities. Where are they and which ones do you qualify for? Budgeting for cushioning purposes, especially after internship. You don't know how it is going to be out there. Do your emergency funds know how to calculate cash flow? Yeah. And those things, I would suggest two books that really helped me. So one is called How Much? And the other one is called Should I? The good thing about these books is that they're written by a Kenyan author. So they're very relevant. She's called Florence Bet. I'd really suggest you guys do that because it will really help you. If you can do postgraduate immediately or decide on entrepreneurship projects early, Go for it. I tried. Uh, I wish I was in the circle doc. Did not manage, but I tried. <laughs> it's a good thing. If you can start early, the better for you. My tips for you, um, with from the experience that I've had. First of all, take care of your mental health. A lot of doctors are out here suffering. Young doctors, don't die alone. Please reach out. Talk to your senior colleagues or if you have a friend, get that support system. Get a good support group. Your parents, your friends, those people that you've been with, those WhatsApp groups, they'll, be, they'll come in very handy because the road we are treading on is treacherous. Doctors should be more open about talking about their mental health. It is a big problem right now. Live within your means is something that you got to learn. And leaning on God, I'm glad that people talked about God here. We should not be ashamed to talk about God. God will help you. Prayer helps. I've been through it, and I know it does. Leaning on God will make you, immeasure, uh, make you have immeasurable leaps and bounds. Link yourself to a good mentor. Dr. Bita, thank you so much for shaping my dream to be a surgeon. Open your mind to finding opportunities and go for seminars, buy those books to learn, pay for that short course, travel. You will make, uh, you will make connections, create links that will help you in the future. As a parting shot, I'll say, may God be with you. May your stars align. May you thrive when you stand on the shoulders of the giants here who walked before you. I thank you and I hope, I wish you all the best in the world. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. That was Dr. Mapesa. Did you know that your name means money? Uh, see, when you're a dog, um, she has, she's really... Uh, the herald of truth and the beacon of hope that she has said, right? She has really spoken to us about us opening our minds and not limiting ourselves to this small space. We are in a global village 
and he, she has reminded us of so many opportunities and she has truthfully talked about the challenges that your amazing profession faces. Of course, I am in your profession by extension because I take medicine with water. She has really reminded us that she, it is now time for you to scale up mountains that she has said and it is time for you to start building yourself personal development plans doing the short courses that she's talked about, amazing uh, IELTS exams, the English exams. She has really highlighted a lot. And being the book lover she is, she has left for you two books to go and buy. How much? So I didn't know if the book is asking you how much do you want to buy the book? Oh, you have the, uh, you can bring it here so that I show it on camera. Uh, we have some online chaps who want to buy this book. Oh, this is should I? Should I have it? <laughs> ah, you see, I asked and I had. Uh, you tell me how much I'll pay. I also love reading, so thank you so much. I hope that uh, breaks the ice. Thank you so much for spending time to remind us also that we need to take care of our mental health as uh, doctors. And having said that, we are just a few steps away from the keynote address. Are you ready for the keynote address? Are you ready? Uh, or Dr. Mapesa has has jumped in. Thank you so much, Dr. Mapesa. So I want to invite, before we go to the keynote address, we have a few of our sponsors that I will invite who will speak, and then we will go to our keynote address. So the first uh, one of our sponsors is the Square Pharmaceutical. They are in the house. Are you in, are you in Square Pharmaceuticals? Yes. Let's appreciate him until he gets here. Give us some music. Give us some music, please. Show us how you dance. A good dance square. You know how to dance square, like we were told to sit square. Please come. How would you dance? But in the interest of time, Karibu. God is good. And all the time. So I won't take so much of your time, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Emmanuel Juma. I'm representing Square Pharmaceuticals. As you can see here, is one of the sponsors. Eh? So, uh, first and foremost, I just want to introduce a team of three gentlemen who came in with me. You can just maybe raise up so that you can be seen by our people. So that is uh, David, Kevin, and Alvin. Yeah, you can just sit down. So the reason why I started by saying that God is good is because it's true God is good. And you can bear me witness that for you guys... To reach this fight because of God. Okay, that's my assumption. Because now, as per what we are seeing in the country, some going the Shakahola way, <laughs> some going the other way, but whichever direction, God is good. So, for my side, I just want to introduce Square. That's a Bangladesh based company, but we are right here in Nairobi. So, we have been here for more than 20 years in Kenya as a Square Pharmaceuticals, though we do marketing of products, drugs, to our hospitals here, to the pharmaceuticals, for more than 20 years. In 2018, we started our own Square Pharmaceuticals Kenya Annex in our three river Nairobi. And now it's in completion, and we have a number of now seven products being manufactured right here in Kenya. Can you just clap for yourselves? So the reason why you're clapping for yourself is because this is not our effort. But it's the effort of the doctors who are practicing and the effort of the doctors who are coming on board to practice. That's why I'm seeing very able doctors here. Dr. Bita is here. Dr. Nalo is here. These are some of the key people who are making Square a big company in Kenya and at international levels. So what we did today, we just partnered with you guys the same way we partner with some other Teams which finished, like last year we partnered with the same Maseno, eh? Isn't it? Yeah, we were here, we brought in some few goodies here and there. And also we partnered with uh, Uzima, I saw Scotch here, Scotch. Thanks, eh? <laughs> and also this year we are uh, partnered with Maseno and same any other university, any time we'll partner with them as much as far as they're finishing up their medical course. So... 
to, final, to, to finalize up, eh? this is what is outside there. We have some very nice pens for you guys. Uh, they are branded uh, Angelok. Okay, I won't go into talking about drugs because this is not the right forum. Eh? But Angelok is our, Angel, is our low satan. So anytime you get a, a chance, you can get one of our pens from there as you break so that you can have a first touch of what Angelok is all about by the pen. So Angelok is a Losatan. We have Angelok, Angelok H, which is Losatan, HCTZ, and all these kind of things we'll talk outside there when you start practicing. For today, I won't talk about them. And then number two, we came with a very nice pocket book. Eh? It's also on the display outside there, Tori. I know you are passing by seeing Tori, Tori, Tori. What is this Tori outside here? It's a Tori Coxib, eh? So it's a small pocket notebook. Feel free anytime you break, you can pick one for your pocket. It's a Tori Coxib, it's in the market. But because we brought these uh, pocket uh, notebooks, you can have it to your home so that you can have a first feel of what our Tori Coxib is. And then lastly, as I log out, is uh, you know people are different, eh? Sometimes we bring the small one, they want a bigger one. Sometimes we bring bigger one, they want a smaller one. Eh? So we brought both. The smaller one for Tori, and there is the bigger one for the, for the Ambrox. Eh? And everybody knows Ambrox, so I won't mention anything about Ambrox. It's a mucolytic expectorant. Almost all the pharmacies have it, but what we have here is the notebook. So I think that is all. I want to log out and have a seat. But the most important thing, thanks so much for the effort you did, ladies and gentlemen, to read this far. Ten years ago, I was here. Not here at Sarova, but somewhere in Nairobi when I was doing a similar session. Eh? And I remember such a chance, at such a time, I was a faculty rep, and I had such kind of uh, work my good friend Anne is doing. It's hectic, but congratulations for all you did. I, could, I, I remember those calls, she was calling me every time. Hey, Juma, what is happening, Bana? You guys you are to come on board. So it is hectic. Congratulations, the team that organized the whole event. And a big up. Otherwise, thanks so much. And may the good Lord bless you. Thank you. Now you can dance while going back. Your microphone. Thank you. Your, your microphone, you make idea. Thank you so much. Uh, you are doing amazing work at uh, Square Pharmaceuticals. We we appreciate you for finding time to sponsor the event and also come. Uh, without wasting time, I said that we have a few people before our keynote address. And now I want to welcome Dr. Wafula Nalwa from Kisumu Heart Center. You know the music to put? Let's appreciate him as he come. Thank you so much. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Um, you can see me. I'm told I'm dark. I absorb a lot of light. Okay, just wave at me. Give your neighbor a high five. Yeah. Um, so I'm glad to be here um, uh, to see you as young, budding guys, ready to go into the world. And it's a nice place to be. And uh, because of that, I thought it's, it's, it's nice to contribute something uh, to make it a nice exit entry, isn't it? You're leaving one phase to get into another. I have a few thoughts, though. Uh, of course, I taught at Maseno at some point, and then I left. Uh, so this is what I would say. I believe in the Bible, I believe in the scriptures, and I'll take a few examples from the Bible relevant to you as a young person. There are significant people in the Bible who started changing the world while they were young. Isn't it? Who do you know? David. Who else do you know? Joseph. Who else do you know? 
Who else? Jesus. Uh -huh. Who else? Daniel. And what do you notice about all these people? They were exposed by crisis. Yeah? They were exposed by crisis. Joseph was in a crisis. He was accused of attempting to rape his employer's wife. David had taken lunch and his siblings looked down on him, isn't it? And the crisis of having to deal with Goliath was the opportunity for him to be known. Otherwise he was a nobody in a shepherd's field. Who was the other one? Daniel. Daniel was among a, a group of uh, Hebrew boys. If you read that account in chapter 1, it's very interesting. Young, intelligent, good looking, resourceful, quick to learn. A lot of nice stuff that I see in you. And the king had ordered, get me that quality of people. And then take them through training. So you notice that these four Hebrew boys had to go through a period of training. You notice that David had to go through a period of training in the shepherd's field. You are not going to make it quickly without an, a period of training. The training may be in the back where nobody knows you, nobody cares, but you are acquiring very important skills. When Goliath was exposed, it was the skills he learned in the back of beyond that saved the day. I know you are bright, I know you are skilled, but do not try and compare yourself with me or Dr. Bita or Dr. Uh, Ayeko. Don't. Just learn your skills and be good at what you have. Are we together? Joseph was so skilled, but he started off in someone's house. He was accused of something he didn't do. He was thrown into prison. His leadership was honed while he was in prison. His sensitivities were honed while he was in prison. His prayer life was honed while he was in prison. And by the time he was, re he was revealed, he had matured. His qualities had matured. Are we together? So you are young, you are energetic, you are resourceful. But you are going to go through a period of training. Be ready. If you go to a hospital and they put you in a place where you are going to do phlebotomy, do it so well that they will say, the way this thing has been done, I don't think this lady has been here. Where is she? Can she take us through? Or where is he? Can he take us through? Are we together? I have a young medical officer who's, it's barely a week, maybe two weeks. And uh, I had a patient who, who came in with a pericardial tamponade, cardiac tamponade. And we did uh, a pericardial puncture. Over a course of three days, we had 3.6 liters out. And the, lady, the guy was still dyspneic. And do you know who did um, what we found to be the problem? One lung was collapsed because of a massive pleural effusion. And it's one young lady who did the underwater seal drainage. She's barely out of internship. Skills. Skills. Now when she calls me, I know she's calling me about a genuine problem. Because she has been learning. I want you to learn. Be prepared to be at the back. Be prepared to be where nobody is seeing you but gain the skills, what she was talking about. The skills are what are going to sell you, that's what's going to expose you. I would encourage you to also think, have your dream. Have your dream, you might not get it quickly, it will take time. Kisumu Heart Center is a thought that came to my mind in 2010. But when did it start happening? About a decade later. So there are things that you go through there are things that prepare you, but they take time. It's not wash, wash. <laughs> they take time. Be patient. Sometimes you try to force things and they are not working and your mental health starts suffering. Be prepared. Be prepared to step back. For instance, your family can crash. I've experienced that. 
You can get a loan and you can't pay for some reason. Soak it in, learn from it. Are we together? Your parent can pass away at a very critical point. You don't get stressed, it happens, okay? You can get into a group and it doesn't work. Don't worry, it happens, it will come to pass. I have gone through that, I've been in a group, it's collapsed, I moved on, Kisumu Heart Center is Yaman Amnagan. Pakata to Mekwana Heart Run, my friend. Sio Maramoja, but Marambili, we've hosted Omanyala, who had ever dared to host him, paid his tickets, paid his accommodation, paid him money, real money. Have you touched money? <laughs> but that's the power of a dream. So dream, write it somewhere, imagine what you want to do. Be prepared to learn the skills, be prepared to face setbacks. Each setback is a detour, it's, it's a turn, it's a twist. For instance, if you are unable to pay your loan, then you look back and you say, ah, this is how I messed it. I borrowed this loan to do this, but I ended up buying a Mac X. Now this Mac X has depreciated, it's less than 30% of the value. If I try to sell it, I can't still pay the loan. Next time I take a loan, I'll not buy a car. See only point one. The next point may be you got into a certain relationship and it was a money pit. You went to Sarova, went to Kunste, you went wherever, you spend a lot of money and you cannot account for it. Then you know next time, when I'm searching for a friend, I don't look for this kind of fellow. Sindio, I'm an Amnagani. You can go to a job, you are very good. Like when I was at Masena, I think I taught. I never miss my classes. I never miss my lectures. I gave my tutorials, I went above and beyond. But when things happened and everything folded, you fold your tail and just go on and do other things. So I want you to be prepared. The school that prepares you for life is usually in the mundane things. Be prepared. Be prepared. The social networks are important. Nobody is coming to save you. Save yourself by investing in the right people. Self, save yourself by having the, the correct attitude. Sindio, when Joseph, Joseph helped this guy and he thought the guy was going to put a man, uh, his name, was going to say, uh, we have a genius in there, Abu, go and pick him. It was a crisis that revealed him. Are we together? So nobody is really going to, to save you. But if you are good enough, your work can speak for you and open the door for you. Are we together? Choose God, let him help you. He does. He does. There are times you have no answers. There are times you have no... You've hit the wall, and the wall is not moving. What do you do? Ask God to help you, pull you out, and, and dust you up, and, and help you get back. So, Kisumu Heart Center, Kisumu Heart and Cancer Run are products of time. They are products of persistence. There are times I felt alone. There are times I have felt the world is against me, but I've kept pushing. I've kept pushing. I've kept pushing. I've spoken about it. I have, well, you clapped. Because it is tangible, isn't it? Uh, yesterday I was speaking to someone for the first time, and it's someone all the way in Nyeri. And they are telling me how when we were starting it, they were so annoyed that I had taken over a community school. And yet, when I was starting that, the community desperately wanted me to do it because they were stuck. You understand? So the, the world may not really understand how you are moving into what is your purpose. But like David, you start strong in God, learn your skills, do what you are supposed to do. When the time comes and you are going to rest, please ensure you have fulfilled your purpose. The Bible says that when David had fulfilled his purpose, he he did what? He rested with his with his ancestors. Have you fulfilled your purpose? I urge you to find it, run after it, and pursue it. It starts as simple ideas in your mind. How did Heart Center begin? I was, I was annoyed at some point. Why are we sending all our patients to a private hospital that is very expensive? 
What is this software that they have that we in a public hospital cannot have? Don't we go to the same medical schools? Don't we go to the same high schools, the same primary schools? Don't we see, live in the same country? And I said, no, I'm going to do something about it. And I remembered from high school, I said I wanted to deal with the heart. I wanted to become a specialist. And so you have this set of conditions, this set of conditions conspiring to drive you back to the original idea that I had. And I started talking about it. I was transferred to a far off land, 200 kilometers. I sneaked back through Maseno. I interacted with some of you. And it was still, it was still pushing me that I needed to do something about it. And I am glad, I can tell you, I can tell you from the confessions of a number of my colleagues. They are like, hey, Doc, how do you, how do you just focus on this one thing and run this massive enterprise? But that's the power of a vision, that's the power of a dream, and you can do it. And they say because of that, we believe in ourselves. We can do it. And they have started their own. Now, you don't have to be a squatter in any other hospital. You can actually start your own ecosystem. I remember visiting one of the big hospitals, wanting to do some work there. And I was just blocked. So I walked out, stood at the gate, looked back, and I said, what are you talking about? You think you can block me? I'm going to create my own value system. I will. In two years' time, it will be standing. Isn't it there? Caesar, how are you? <laughs> Don't I have a value system? So you've got to look at things and not give up. Look at it, look at it squarely. When a door closes, it's an opportunity for you to create another one. Okay? But do not allow anybody to, to underrate you, to overlook you, and to make you look like you are sorry to be here. So I've said a few things. I hope um, they help you. But prepare for shocks. Prepare for shocks positively. Prepare for shocks positively. When you are hit and you are down, it's not the time to die and bury yourself. Dust yourself up, get up, nobody is going to save you. Trust in God and save yourself. If someone, if, someone, if someone comes along to say, let me pull you up a bit, fine. But most of the times, as you know, most of the times you'll be alone. So learn as much as you can in the group the way you are, but most of the times you will have to make your own decision. Be prepared to do that. Okay? I wish you very well. The world is big. Opportunities are many. The fact that we have devolution and some money going to the counties, it offers easier opportunities for you to invest and grow. You can actually go to, you can actually specialize, become a surgeon, go to Isiolo and thrive. You can specialize and go to Mandera and be paid in Ethiopian beer and make a lot of money if that's your goal. You can come to Kisumu and thrive. Just be unique and be forthright. When you are forthright and you are good, people just say, I want to talk one and and I want to jama. Don't even go anywhere. And if he cannot tell you, if he cannot do it, he'll tell you where to go. Are we together? Be forthright, be passionate, be visionary, be persistent. Do not give up. But remember, you may have to start where? In the back of beyond, where nobody knows you. And generally, that's where we begin from. Do not despise the days of humble beginnings. Thank you very much. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much, Dr. Harry. Those were amazing words cutting across your purpose, your vision, and your dreams. You have actually reminded us, uh, you started by mentioning two characters in the Bible, Daniel and Joseph, and you really made us know that uh, even now, uh, even if our dreams take long, they surely come to pass. Thank you for reminding us that real money is there. You said real money. Ah, yeah. Finalist in the house, say real money. Yes, Bana, you are going to make money out here. 
I am also a herald of hope, just like Dr. Mapesa. Uh, sir, Dr. Ri, you've reminded us that uh, we are supposed to be prepared for whatever comes. When we are knocked down, it's not time to bury ourselves, but to dust our, ourselves and rise up again. But I like the way you finish it with, choose God. No one is coming to save us. Thank you so much. Having said that, I just want to welcome our next uh, sponsor presentation. I think this is going to be the last sponsor presentation for the night before we march majestically into our keynote address. And so I want you to put your hands together for Mr. Dennis Simiu, who will represent Cosmos. Ah, yeah. Cosmos. DJ. Show us some moves before as a nice breaker. You know they are they are our golden sponsor. Show us some moves, please. If you need dance, your gold. Another one. But real money is here. Real money. Karib. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Uh, first of all, I love. I'd like to con uh, congratulate all the finalists, all the doctors in the house. I know it is not, or it has not been a, a good journey, tiresome reading. I, do, I believe uh, even there is uh, soup, as uh, they say. But uh, I cannot say much of that. But uh, congratulations to everyone who has made it up to here. Uh, my name is D Dennis Simiu. I work with Cosmos as a supervisor in specialty line. And uh, I'm privileged also to be with my team. Maybe they can wave from where they are. We have Alan, the first one. The lady, the only lady is Nancy. We have Johnson Mosetti, and we have Sami. So thanks once again. So I would love to take you to a, a brief history of Cosmos and the mileage that we have done and what is Cosmos as a family. Cosmos Pharmaceutical Limited is a local manufacturing company uh, that uh, produce generic medicine that is WHO and uh, GMP compliant and certified by the European PICS. Uh, as Cosmos, in Cosmos Limited, we use high quality materials, latest production technology, and quality management system to develop high efficacy product with an aim to achieve self sustainable health for East Africa driven by quality, safety, affordability, and uh, availability. So we all know that uh, the importance of medicine can only be realized if they are readily available uh, when required. With that aim, that's when Cosmos started in 1978 with the sole aim of manufacturing quality medicine at an affordable price for Kenyans. So as Cosmos, we believe quality is a paramount importance. And uh, there is only one quality when it comes to medicine. That is adhering to strict good practicing manufacturing practice. We are able to achieve this through both the public and the private partnership. So in Cosmos, we boast for, with more than 300 brands that, is a, that increase the quality of life, convenience, and compliance for the people. As Cosmos, Cosmos is, a, is now a third generation family business of technorance that has grown to have a presence in 12 sub-Saharan African countries. And uh, for those maybe who will venture into other parts of the world, mostly in Africa, we are now in uh, Tanzania, we are in Uganda, 
Rwanda, we are in Burundi, we are in Lesotho, we are in Malawi, we are in uh, Ethiopia, South Sudan. So we are spreading all over. And when you go to these countries, rest assured that you will interact with a, a Cosmos brand. That's why when you give a prescription of Cosmos brand, you are supporting more than 500 people. That's why you go by the slogan that you, you buy Kenya, you build Kenya. So we really look forward for working together in promoting Cosmos brands. So this is Dr. Parkash Patel. He passed on last year. He is the founder of Cosmos with six decades of experience. He created the company with a vision to provide appropriate, efficacious, quality, and economical formulation of Kenya and neighboring countries. He is a registered and uh, he is a registered pharmacist, and is 001. That is pharmacist 001, and. Uh, he has a practice in three countries, that is UK, India, and Kenya. So this is just a brief mileage of what Cosmos has come to. He moved in Kenya in 1959, and uh, that's when he set the plant in 1978. And with times, you can see how we have grown. Manufacturing started in uh, essential drugs. We have also linked up with some uh, companies that we have done, uh, we used to manufacture ARVs, that is in 2004. So we have grown and we boast this because of your support and we look forward also for your support as we go a long way. Okay, let me just talk. Okay. No problem. So we we know that uh, WHO, cause Cosmos is a generic uh, company manufacturing generic products. We understand that uh, WHO uh, define uh, define a generic product as a pharmaceutical product, usually intended to be interchangeable with an innovator product that is manufactured without a license from the innovator company and uh, marketed after the expiry date of the partner of the patent or other uh, exclusive rights so cosmos cosmos now came into picture because why do you want to use cosmos brands being a generic product. We understand that the benefits of Cosmos brands will be that it will be cost saving for both the pharmacies and the patient. And uh, being that we are spread all over Kenya, the accessibility to high quality, safe and effective medicine. And this will promote uh, patient compliance to the treatment and uh, in the end, we'll achieve the comprehensive health sustainable system. So some generic medicine uh, are even more expensive uh, than the original brands. But uh, with Cosmos, we do offer a range of quality products at a cost effective price of both the patient and the pharmacist. So when you go into the field, I believe that we'll interact with some of our brands that uh, we have a whole range of therapeutic range. That is, uh, we have pain management, hypertension, diabetes, respiratory infection, gastroenterology, depression management, just name it. So through our national and uh, countrywide coverage, I believe we'll be meeting uh, our medical representatives and uh, reach to both doctors and clinician and most of them will teach something to do with cosmos or educate you with anything to do with cosmos brands 
So Cosmos brands are high quality standards. That's why we all I'm asking by saying that when you are moving now into your practice, what for the interests of your patient, for the interests of managing your patient, for better compliance, for using a quality brand. I believe when you give this prescription, what you want is a good result from your patient. And this you can get from quality of Cosmos brands. So just to mention some of the brands, maybe you have interacted there, is uh, Glucomet, which is our metformin. We have a uh, Losatan by the brand name Caditan. We have our Cavedelol, Vidol, because uh, we have our Amlodipine Varinil, and uh, we are growing because we have already introduced or launched some few products that is in the management of uh, the likes of uh, the anticoagulants. We have a Rivaroxaban, which is an expensive molecule, but uh, Cosmos, uh, being a local manufacturer, is giving it at an affordable price. So rest assured, when you put your patient on Cosmos brand, your patient will afford it, will get it because will be availability and will access it. So with that, I believe that uh, Cosmos is a, a responsible company. And uh, when you, your patient interact with our brands or there is an advanced effect, you feel free to to contact us, I will share the, the contacts. We run a pharmacovigilance program just in case there is an interaction with our brands. And uh, if you want to know more about Cosmos also, you can visit our website, which is uh, www.cosmos-pharma.com and you'll get to know the history and everything that we have there. So to the doctors in the house, I look forward in working with you and we'll interact more when we meet in the field. So I want to wish you well, and uh, congratulations once more from Cosmos Limited. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, that was a very elaborate uh, presentation, and I will not belabor. Are you ready for the keynote address? Are you ready? Now, if you're ready for the keynote address, please be on your feet. Just stand up. Please just stand. We, we want to stretch Kidogo so that we take in everything from the keynote address before we welcome our guest speaker. So we will stretch to the left. My left is your right. Then to the right. Then in front and then back. So you look at me. Also, would love you to put your hands together as I welcome Dr. Caesar Bitter. Let's put our hands together. Now, the DJ decided that Dr. Bitter is no musician. He, he and the music, they went to different kindergartens. Karibu sana, sir. Thank you. Thank you for this very great honor to stand before you as a keynote speaker. 
Um, I'm usually not very good on protocols, but today uh, you'd allow me to do, to try and have some protocol in me. Um, first, you'd allow me to acknowledge um, two people who are part of the team that made me a surgeon. Okay? I have Dr. Willis Oyeko. Dr. Willis Oyeko was my consultant somewhere in Western when I was a medical officer. Uh, he paid me my first locum check. <laughs> okay? Yes. And he's been part of the team that has made me grow. Uh, when I came to Kisumu, he was part of the team that welcomed me to Kisumu. You know, Never. <laughs> yeah. I'm usually the guy who you um, initially in year three, my first contact with this class was in year two when they were doing community attachment in a center called Ebusiratsi. Yeah, some of you are there. And then you came in in year four. Um, you know that time it was in the corridors. Um, Good morning, Dr. Bita. <laughs> And I just they say, hi, Doc. <laughs> uh, some of you had the confidence and the audacity of Jacqueline Gidinji to come for the final exam already labeled Dr. Jacqueline Gidinji, MBCHB. <laughs> okay? But thank you. Thank you for this honor. Okay? Um, as was mentioned by Dr. Mapesa and as was mentioned by... I think Dr. Sheila as well. Um, this journey is usually made by people before you. Yeah? You come and progress it and grow it further. Yeah? And uh, to that extent, I must also acknowledge that there are people in this room who over the last few years have reached out to me to help them with the mentorship. And some of them have progressed. So I'm very happy when I see Dr. Mapesa Nandua joining orthopedic surgery this year. I'm very happy when I see Dr. Corazon Dare graduating as a surgeon this year. Dare you have no choice but to graduate. You have no choice but to graduate. Okay. So when uh, O'Neill reached out and I saw the theme um, beyond the classroom uh, and to facing the challenges of the changing um, medical landscape of healthcare. Um, one, I don't think that you will be going beyond the classroom. Okay? Uh, you are probably on a corridor out, but learning in medicine is for life. Okay? And I think I've shared with the last few groups that even as I stand here, I am studying something. Yeah? The last point that we were just sharing with Jana the last place she met Dr. Okello was somewhere in Switzerland. And both of them had gone to learn something. So, Lorraine, if Jana is learning at her age, my goodness, Beba textbooks. <laughs> okay? Yes. So, just know that you are still having a way to go. But you are going to transition from the hardcore lecture and tutorials that you're having 
to something different. And this something different is what you will need to define. I was asked to talk a little about what is changing the medical landscape. The speakers before me have mentioned a lot. So I'll just mention a few. I'll repeat two of them and bring something else. One big thing that has changed is the reverence that people had for doctors. Okay? When Prof. Yana and Dr. Willis were graduated, being a doctor was a hero. Okay? In this part of the country, there are sayings amongst the Lua and the Luya that they say that the doctor is the second god. Isn't it? Yes. My friend, if you go out there saying, oh, I'm the second god, you will be trampled on with everything. And what has made that change? One, we are now more doctors. When I came to Kisumu in 2014, there were four general surgeons. Okay. Now, there are more than four general surgeons at Georgia Ridge. There were three gynecologists. They are now way over 15. Okay. When Dr. Dare was the MO intern, she would work directly with me. Because there was no hierarchy. There was no line in between. Now, in this town, in surgery, there are 14 residents in surgery. There are 16 residents in obstetrics and gynecology. There are residents in anesthesia. Everything is there. So one, our numbers have grown. So before, you know, some of us worked in small towns where um, when you're a doctor, you could eat in hotels without paying. Because they would not take your money. Doctor, end it too, end it too, end it too. Again, I repeat, if some of you try that one here, <laughs> Try leaving the Sarova without paying. <laughs> Get it. So the numbers have grown. Then secondly, doctors have been brought out of the cocoon where doctors were so revered that they didn't need to ask for anything. Now you have to ask for your jobs. You have to ask for your salaries. You have to leave. You have to ask for everything that you want. So that has also changed the field. The first conference, surgical conference I went to, yeah, members of the farm paid everything for me. I was paid for at White Sands. I was flown by flight. I was given money in my pocket. So you've paid full board for me. You've given paid for my registration there. You've taken me by flight. And you've given me in the year 2007, 6,000 shillings a day for a week. Okay? When our salary was 46, 47,000. So you've given me an additional one month salary. Why? I'm a doctor going for a conference. That has changed. Second thing that has changed is that the other cadres are eating into what used to be exclusively medical doctors. So when previously there were only consultant anesthesiologists and a few clinical office anesthesiologists, now they are a nurse anesthetist. Okay? When only a doctor would fix a central line, now everyone is fixing a central line. When only a doctor would be the MOH in charge of a district, now, everyone, including public health officers, can be appointed in charge. This has forced doctors to be more aggressive. Then, the general age of the doctors has also gone down. Okay? It's not that um, we were older becoming doctors. It's just that there were more senior doctors yeah, and very few junior then now there are many junior doctors. Yeah? So the pyramid is heavier there at the bottom. Then doctors went on strike for 100 days. Doctors became militants. Okay? 
Um, I'm, I'm, let me share an experience. Two years ago, I think two or three years ago, um, on social media, um, faculty are here, so they are witnesses to this. Huh? When uh, what was mentioned about some faculty members of Maseno is how we are good, the only good thing we can do to Maseno is if we come back as cadavers <laughs> so that you can dissect us. You see, that one statement by one person who was not a student at Maseno, okay, gave such an impression out there of the faculty at Maseno. So people are asking me and saying, hey, Banda, you guys, what are you doing to your boys? I'm saying, this name, I've never seen it on a, on a mark sheet. I don't know this guy. Okay? Yes. But there's a group of doctors who have become very militant. Okay? So these are some of the things that have changed. Then, the last thing that has changed. My friend, medicine is changing. The skills you acquire every two, three years have to change. Okay? I'm a trainer for ATLS. Okay, let me say I was a trainer. Because um, ATLS, you're supposed to get accredited every three years. If it lapses and uh, you don't get accredited, then you have to be trained again. So mine lapsed in uh, 2019. Then uh, the rule is I'm supposed to go and train again, and there's a pre-test, and there's a post-test. And the books are sent in advance. So I look at the list of people who are going for that training, and I see one of my residents there. <laughs> Dr. Patrick Omondi, I'll mention. <laughs> so I ask myself, um, what if I fail? <laughs> and my resident is there. <laughs> How will I get back to Kisumu? <laughs> what will I tell people? So you know this saying, Utambi Awatu Nini, Sindio. So my friend, this is now four years I've not gone back for the training. <laughs> I'm just telling you that when you looked at the book, yeah, the way me and Yana the first time trained for ETLS has totally changed. Okay? When Dea came from her last ATLS and even, okay, I'm a surgeon at heart, huh? even the fluids that you give in bands have changed. And she comes in a ward round and she says, no, 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 no. We are no longer giving four meals per kg. We are giving two meals. And there were two other surgeons in the room and they looked at each other and they looked at me and I shaked, yes, yes, yes. You are <laughs> <laughs> Which means that my, there was a gap somewhere. So you have to grow. You have to continue. The innovation. We were sharing with colleagues a few days ago, I think Dr. Okelo and Dr. Immaculate were in the room, about how we used to open the abdomen from where to where, and now there's robotic surgery, there's laparoscopic surgery, okay? You can actually operate without touching the patient. Okay? Unless you go back to learn that, that will miss you. So the landscape is changing. You are more, you are more aggressive, you have to be more aggressive. So what do you need to do? First, keep learning and learn for the rest of your lives. Okay? Do not reach a point that you say, ni meto sheka. Learn for the rest of your life. But second, more importantly, get the relevant skills. You had Dr. Mapesa giving you options. If you decide that you want to be a public health specialist, kindly learn what it needs to be reached that level. Get to it. So that the day they want somebody in your speciality and they ask, you can raise your hand, you can do the job, and people will notice you.
Second thing, again it was mentioned by Dr. Vitalis, medicine is the only profession where as part of your oath, you swear to be your brother's keeper. Dr. Nando also mentioned it. Please take care of each other and reach out to each other. There are a lot of wrong things in the profession. Okay? We are in the top five in depression in terms of amongst professions. Okay? The dentists in the house have the highest suicide rate. Don't look at Dr. Immaculate. She's older than me and she hasn't committed suicide. <laughs> okay? I'm just saying we struggle a lot by being cocooned in our ward rounds, yeah? being cocooned in these small spaces, take care of each other. Third thing, you cannot give unless you have. An empty bottle cannot power out water. Take care of yourself. So I'm going to digress a little from all these guys who tell you, yeah, not to live a good life. No, I'm not saying, I can see Aguambo, you're really agreeing with me. <laughs> You've worked for almost 20 years to reach a certain level. Okay? Lift yourself and the people around you to a certain level. Dr. Mara is not here today, but yesterday we were sharing how one, education is a game changer. Okay? Now, medical education should be a game changer for you and for the people around you. But don't take your whole salary. I repeat, don't take your whole salary to support the community around you. Leave something for yourself. Okay? You should be able to walk to a butter shop and buy shoes worth 7,000 Kenya shillings. Okay? But the next thing I'm going to say is even more important. Please invest. And I want to give you examples, personal examples. When Dr. Vitalis was talking and he kept looking at me, he wanted me at some point to raise my hand, but I was not going to raise my hand. Okay? I joined KMA Circle one year post internship. Yeah? And most of the senior doctors in this room are in KMA Circle. Dr. Willis Oyeko has been there longer than me. There is nothing as good as knowing that even if something happens and I hit rock bottom, I have a few millions behind me. Get it? Yes. Start early. You guys have known me as an open person, so I'll give you open examples. Okay? I've never bought a car cash. All my cars I buy for loans from KMA Circle. The house I'm living in in Kisumu, KMA Circle. Okay? One good thing about investment is it's easier to invest somebody else's money. I take a loan, and Dr. Vitalis mentioned it, yeah? I only have three million, I need six million. Let me take Willis three million. I have six million. The only difference now is that I'm not going to the bank. Because the day my salary delays by two days, the bank takes all the money you have in the account. And the practicing doctors here will tell you. But the circle will call you and say, Dr. Bariako. Kimomana kisumu, eh, kimomana, give me some time. <laughs> okay? Yes. So invest. Please. The generations before us left it very late. And Dr. Willis will tell you the same way, and Profiana will tell you the same thing. The generations before us, there were people who retired and had to continue working because they had nothing to support them. 
And for that, you'd allow me to stand and say that there are people like Willis or Yeko who changed that. Okay? But you invest enough so that you can sleep by choice. Okay? You can wake up and go to Mombasa for a week and feel nothing. Why did you become doctors if you can't go to Mombasa for a week after five years of being a doctor? But you can only do that if you plan for that one. Then the last thing, please have a support structure. Doctors are very poor at taking care of their family.
saw what she was doing, and she's one of the people, very frankly, who has made people like me change our attitude towards residency. When I was going through my residency, it was a disaster. You could not sit on the same table with your consultant until consultants like Profiana would come, even at conferences, and mix with you, and dance with you, and do something. And this has changed. To the extent that I have a nickname for there. I'll not say it here, but Dr. Kilo had some there and started asking, what name is that? <laughs> okay. Secondly, she's a pioneer for women in surgery. So she has also opened the door for many women to come to surgery, all the speciality, founder of the Kenya Association of Women Surgeons. Yeah. She's a giant on whose neck and shoulders many of us have stood. So it gives me much pleasure to invite Prokhana. tonight. You know, sometimes you come to functions and you're <laughs> looking at your clock and uh, looking around to see if the food is being brought, <laughs> you know, and you're thinking, oh, I'm on the end of the list. But no, tonight, to be honest with you, the speakers have been really, I have enjoyed it. I have really, really enjoyed it. And I have come to learn about people. You know, people have shared their stories uh, they've shared from themselves, uh, they've shared uh, their experiences, and I, I really hope, uh, having been to a few of these, that you really appreciate the speakers you had tonight. I think you should give them a round of applause, honestly. <laughs> I, I, I have this envelope up here, simply not because I'm going to speak long, because I know I now am between you and food and awards, so <laughs> I know I will not take long. But, uh, you know, I'm new to Maseno, I'm new to Kisumu, so I'm a little bit nervous. So, you know, it makes you feel a little bit better to have this envelope. Because <laughs> sometimes, you know, when you're wanting to say, what should, I, what should I talk about when I come? You know, I've been in, I invited, and it's such an honor. When Irene called me, I was almost sort of like, uh, do you have the wrong number? <laughs> Uh, do you know who you're speaking to? Because you know sometimes how you get those phone calls and then you realize it's not the right person. And so, and you know, of course, many people with my name, Jana, it's not pronounced Jana, you're correct. You know, I've always get people saying, do you know that your name means yesterday? <laughs> and then they say, is that really your name? <laughs> and I say, yes. And then I say, you're only the 4,333rd person to tell me that. And then they start to laugh. But I've been thinking about what I would say tonight. And I thought, you know, there are many times people say, oh, you know, at this point in your career, you should start to say, you know, what would you tell your younger self? Or what would you do differently? Or what did you really enjoy? What did you think was uh, words of wisdom? And there's been so many words of wisdom tonight. I just really think that it was kind of God who gave me the thoughts that I would say, because really what I want to talk about is the journey. And what I really, really want to encourage you to do is to enjoy the journey. Everyone's talked about the difficulties, the challenges, the successes, the approaches. And you know, every from the time you're little, right, especially in Kenya, I mean, you're three years old and you're taken off to school, you're in pre-kindergarten, and then you know, you have because that's a new thing, you know, I'm from Canada, and then the first time I was invited to 
a graduation was actually for a kindergarten. <laughs> and then everyone, all the kids were wearing their hats and parents were taking, I was like, whoa, <laughs> it starts in kindergarten. My kindergarten, we got jelly beans and sent home for summer. That was it. So there's always been an end result. You're always gearing towards finishing kindergarten, finishing elementary school. You're always gearing towards now I'm getting into, you know, high school and which high school. It's always like an end result. Now we're talking about what specialty or where you're going to work. And those are all really important questions. But I really challenge you tonight to no matter what you do, where you go, all this sage, sage advice you get, enjoy the journey. Cherish the memories. Value each and one of those career changing events that make you who you are. Keep those memories. Enjoy them. Share them. Pass them on. We've talked about mentorship and, and having individuals in your life that have gone before you and paved the way. Those individuals, those interactions that you had. You know, the interactions that Dr. Bita had with the up and coming orthopedic surgeon. Cherish those, enjoy them, because it is a long road and all those things we've talked about. But take those adventures and make the most of them and enjoy them and share them and just, because you can't buy them. Those moments that you think back, because now when I think back about my journey, I'll be honest with you, okay, there's always some things you change, but you don't really want to talk about those. <laughs> the reality is, I've loved my journey. I am a blessed, blessed, blessed woman. And I think back about my life and I enjoy and remember so many components. And I want to just share a couple with you. One was I was about to start it. I'd finished my fellowship in trauma and critical care. And that's how Dr. Vokello and I have kind of connected. It's kind of an unusual thing for an anesthetist and a surgeon to actually see eye to eye on a few things. But we found some common ground in critical care. And I know that's not a model we have in Kenya, but I'm hoping soon that there'll be some surgeons in the room who will want us sort of going to critical care. And we've been speaking about that. And so I had a, a couple months to fill in before my job started. And I found this really cheap rate to go to Singapore. On, and I knew a friend there. So I knew I could stay free. I could eat free. Just had to take this air, airline ticket. So I said, hey, why not? I've got a, some time on my hands. So I went. And to make a long story short, on the Sunday, they invited me to go to church. And we went to the adult Sunday school. And I sat next to a gentleman. And he was an older gentleman. And we got talking. And a long story short, it turned out that he was an American starting to do some trauma training before we had ATLS in Kenya. He started some trauma training in Kenya. And he said, well, you know, we're actually still looking for instructors. And I said, well, I actually happen to have just finished a fellowship in trauma. He said, what? And so, long story short, I started coming to Kenya, to Zambia, to do training courses. And for me, I had already worked in Tanzania. So it was like coming home. As I had worked in a district hospital before I had gone back to become a surgeon. And so then, it was one of those trips that someone told me, oh, they're looking for someone to be a chair of surgery at Aga Khan. And I was like, wow, me, a chair of surgery? First of all, I'm a woman. Second of all, I'm white. And third of all, I'm a surgeon. Like, uh, excuse me, all the other people in the department do not look like me. <laughs> they're not the same gender, and they're not the same color. But then I said, OK, I've got nothing to lose. Let me apply. So by virtue of going to Singapore on a just a whim, because I wanted to fill in some time, I wound up meeting someone who started bringing me to, back to East Africa, where I really, as we say in Bagamoyo, where I used to work, they meant Bwaga, Moyo Yango. Yeah, they used to say it for bad reasons. I said it for good reasons. And so I want you to take opportunities. Take every small, teeny opportunity you possibly could get and make the most of it and enjoy it. Who would have thought that going to Singapore on a cheap airline ticket 
would have wound up actually getting me eventually down the road a job at Aga Khan. Who would have ever thought that that connection would have happened? Take every, don't find any opportunity small or not important or not paid or as someone has said in the back, 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 because you never know how it'll connect down the road in the future. And I also want to mention a couple of things about professionalism. As there's many, many, many stories I could tell you about the opportunities that I said, let me just try this and have led to something quite enjoyable, interesting, fun that I now cherish. But I do want to say a couple of things about professionalism because I do think that that is something that really will set you apart. When I was an intern, I'm not going to mention anything about how long ago, Dr. Okello mentioned 30 years. I said, no, as a woman, you don't mention years. <laughs> My son one time, he started, I, he started, I asked me how old I was, and I said, I'm 31. Then the next birthday, he heard me on the phone talking to someone, and uh, he said to, they were asking my age, and I said, I'm 31. And I got off the phone and he said, Mom, you lied. You're 32. You were 31 last year. <laughs> so, yeah, you don't talk about your age. But when I was an intern, I was on the weekend call, and there wasn't any uh, consultants around. I went to a hospital that didn't have any fellows or didn't have any intern or, pardon me, specialist residents. I chose that so I could get these skills that we've been talking about. And they called me to come and talk to a family. This family had just received the diagnosis in their husband and father that he had cancer. And so they were asking me to come and talk to the family and answer some questions for them. Now I'm an intern, okay? I can't remember how far in, but I wasn't very far in. I didn't have any experience with cancer. I just knew it was a bad disease. So I went to talk to these people. And they started asking me questions like, well, what's going to happen? How, well, like, how long will he live? Like, how's it going to be when he dies? What will it be like? You know, uh, you know, should we do chemotherapy? All these questions they were asking. Of course, you know, I was like, way, way over my head. But at that time, at the very same time as this was happening, Kumbe, my mom, was dying of stomach cancer. And she was pretty well <clears throat> close to when she was going to pass. So I could actually answer those questions from my own experience, not from what I learned in medical school. So don't be afraid to use your knowledge combined with your personal experience. Don't be afraid, as Dr. Bita has been very open and shared with us, to reach out to people and meet them where they're at. That was a very difficult thing for me to do. I didn't tell them what I was going through at the very time and that I was really speaking from personal experience. I think partly <laughs> I was self-preserving because I probably would have broken down if I had. But also... I was there to support them. I wasn't there for me. So don't be afraid to be real, be vulnerable, reach out, be empathetic, and share who you are. Because to this day, that's a memory that I have that no one can take from me, that I feel like something of who, what I was going through meant something to someone else. Don't ever lose that. Now, as a surgeon, you know, as an internist, a cardiologist, you can give drugs. A person get a horrible reaction. And what do they say? That terrible drug. Huh? That's a horrible drug. I would never take that drug again. Now, I'm a surgeon. I cut on you. I take out that pus or disease. What do they say? I had one that you said, yes, I call this my McLeod stomach because <laughs> it was looking so bad, right? So as a surgeon, when you cut on somebody, they remember you. So when I was in America, we had a, an older surgeon who was our boss. 
and he was not yet really, a, you know, doing laparoscopic. And of course, he was old school. He was the boss. He had to be the expert. He had to be the big cheese. So anybody else doing laparoscopic, he didn't really like that in his turf. So I did a lap hernia one day, a ventral hernia. So he was always a bit skeptical and wanted to have a look and see what we were doing. And so, of course, what happens, two, three days later, the lady gets sick. And we all know the risk of bowel injury in lap hernias. So I had to bite the bullet. I had to take her back because she's sick. Of course, he had to come in the OR just to see if I needed help, of course, right? No, he was coming to see what really happened in there. And this lady got pretty sick, but we got working with her. And we worked through it, got her through the, you know, the illness. We had to bring on an ostomy, all those nasty things. But we stuck it out. And actually, as a result of not running from that situation, not leaving her to someone else, being honest with the family, being honest in front of my colleagues who were not in favor of laparoscopic because it made, according to them, made them look like they couldn't do the modern technique or, you know, who was I as this young woman surgeon coming in doing something they couldn't do. So they were very happy to kind of, you know, wipe the floor with me as we say in English. But I stuck it out for what? For the sake of the patient. And I, that patient, every Christmas sent me a Christmas card. Every Thanksgiving gave me a phone call. And the biggest thing was when one of our residents graduated two years later, he made a point of coming to me and telling me, of course, in America, we don't use professor. Dr. McLeod, I just want to tell you one thing that always will stick with me. When that lady got sick, when it was something you had done, I injured her bowel, nobody else. When all your, you know, the older guys were kind of, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, mm -hmm, okay, trying to give you a hard time, you didn't leave that patient. You stuck it out with her. You still saw her. You still her, were her doctor. You still worked through to the end, and she didn't sue you. She actually became your friend, and he was shocked. He was shocked that that family actually left the hospital thanking me. Now, I was pretty happy <laughs> that it, she lived. But I want to challenge you to own your patience. Own what you do. Don't walk away from it. People want to know you care, and they know you're not perfect. They know things can happen. They know things can go the wrong way. And, of course, in surgery, it's a little more obvious because we picked up a knife and cut on you. But it can happen whether you're a pediatrician it can happen whether you're, you know, a neurologist. Let me challenge you to own your patient. Stick it out. Show them you care. And they actually many, many times will not just appreciate it, but will really see you as the doctor that eventually saved them, really pulled them through. So I really, I really thank you for the honor of coming tonight. I don't want to keep you any longer. I could give you lots and lots of stories because I've enjoyed my journey. I have cherished every moment, and it's not over. <laughs> so one thing I'd like to do that I often do and myself, because, you know, these things are breakable, right? We have technology. We have our devices. And pretty soon you're all going to be doing selfies, and, and you're going to be taking pictures. But what I'd really like to do is I'd like to start right now by cherishing this moment. So what I want you to do is I want you all to close your eyes, okay? Because this is a really special moment right now. You are graduating. You are finishing. You are becoming doctors. You've reached the top of the mountain, and now you're going to start talking on, walking on the top of the range. I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to imagine in your mind who's sitting at your table, what they're wearing, what you're wearing, how beautiful this room looks. I want you to put into your mind everyone in the tables beside you, how nice they all look, how good it feels to be a finalist, not a junior, not a rookie, a finalist. And I want us to take a mental photograph. 
And on the count of three, I'm going to click the shutter of our mental photograph. And you're going to take this picture, and it's going to be a memory that when you're 105, you're going to tell your great grandkids about it. So let's one, two, three, click. You can open your eyes. I still have pictures from many years ago. So I want you to remember this night. I want you to cherish this night. I want you to cherish the feeling of fulfillment because there's going to be so many days things will come up. You got to have that feeling of fulfillment that you have tonight that'll keep you going and enjoy your adventures. I want to hear all your adventures. Not one, not two, but many. And look for the adventures in every place you can go. Thank you so much for inviting me. I have so enjoyed the evening. Um, and we haven't even eaten. Can you imagine? I'm obviously a woman, not a man, right? Man wouldn't say that. So I really thank you so much for the honor and the privilege of speaking tonight. And I can't imagine still having attention at this late hour. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Let's all celebrate and have a good time. Amazing. Amazing, amazing from our chief guest. Thank you so much. I will not belabor. You see they are smiling. They are very happy and their faces say it all. And uh, I want to just want to appreciate, just like you said, uh, they have been very, 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 very keen. I didn't see anyone sleeping. I'm reporting to you now live. No one was sleeping, and I think that's how they have been very keen for the last six to seven years. Now, it is now time. I want you to just tell your neighbor, it is time. It is time for the awards. And I uh, just want us to begin with our sponsors. We will give a few tokens to our sponsors. So if you allow me, I will begin uh, by calling the names. I think it's on projection. We will begin with Cosmos. I think they were the last to present. So you'll be the first. You see how things change. You'll be the first. So uh, let me strategize with my cameraman. Now we have finished strategizing for 2025. We will invite Cosmos and whoever is receiving the tokens and gifts. You will receive it here in this same angle that I am standing. Now, to award the first token and gift to our sponsor, I want to invite a very amazing lady, amazing doctor, and the chairperson to the organizing committee to this event. I want you to put your hands together for Anne Patricia Kamau. This, this one she must dance. Now that one is the Igwe. She will give it to Cosmos, a representative from Cosmos. Uh, kindly come the instead of time. Come this side so that our cameraman can capture you well. Thank you so much for being one of our golden sponsors. That is Cosmos. We really appreciate you. That is from our chair lady. Let's appreciate our chair lady. Thank you so much. We will have our next sponsors, that is uh, Kisumu Specialist Hospital. And to give this award, I will also invite an amazing doctor, Dr. Karen Muraria. Let's appreciate Dr. Karen Muraria. Put your hands together for Karen Muraria. She said she's not the class rep, but today as the MC, with the powers bestowed on me, you are the class rep of the life after finalizing thank you you, you will stand here i'm directed that you stand exactly here yeah. this is okay so to get ready after kisumu specialist is k mesako 
And uh, please, I am not biased. The next in line is also a lady doctor. I also want to invite an amazing doctor to give this award to KMA Sako. Dr. Sheila. Let's appreciate Dr. Sheila. KMA Sako, please come for your token. We really appreciate you for sponsoring this event and being here in person. Thank you so much. Let's appreciate them. And to give this award to Kisumu Heart Center is going to be an amazing doctor. You can guess. Dr. Atan Atanat Dr. Vokwa, kindly. Let's appreciate Dr. Vokwa. And, and you know he's a friend of mine, so he will punish me for almost biting my tongue. And let's let's welcome Kisumu uh, Kisumu Heart Center to receive this award. Oh, Dr. had left. Huh? So, okay, Brian, you can receive on behalf of Dr. Ari. That is Dr. Brian. You know, he will also start his own heart center. Say amen. Yes. Uh, last but not least, one of our sponsors, uh, Hamptons, Hamptons Hospital. We will welcome, we will invite another amazing doctor, Dr. Irina Uma. Let's appreciate Dr. Irina Uma. Please come for your award. Come for your award. Ah, you are here. So, uh, Square, please get ready. So to give this award to Square Pharmaceuticals in the house, I want to welcome another amazing doctor. Dr. Katija. Let's appreciate Dr. Katija. Dr. Katija, please. Kuja uki densi kidogo. Biga densi kidogo tafadhali. Ama, ama, ama will smile to be able to smile. That's fine. Thank you so much. You will give this award to Square Pharmaceuticals. We thank Square Pharmaceuticals for being as one of the sponsors for this event. Without you, we will not be here today. Thank you so much. Are you even ready for this next section? Are you even ready for this next section? Are you? Please, I hope you didn't see that. Assume you didn't see that, right? The slides are messing up with me. Now, I want us to appreciate our lecturers, right? And so, to appreciate our lecturers, one of them is going to be the Outstanding Dean Award. And this award is going to go to the Dean. Now, because Dean is not around, there is no one else better than you and I to receive this gift on his behalf. Than Dr. Bita. Let's appreciate Dr. Bita. <laughs> to award, to award uh, the dean, who is represented by Dr. Bita, Tim Bran Wafula, Dr. Tafadali, come and give this award to doc, Dr. Bita. I'll request you, Dr. Dr. Bita, to come here. Oh, you're waiting for... For team, oh, okay. So after this award for the team, Dr. Bita, in your other life, you are a dean. One day. Amazing, amazing. One of the awards is going to go to the best teacher in preclinicals. And do you know who that is? None other than DJ Apan Unaka Zile. Yes. So this award goes to Dr. Nguena Magak. Let's appreciate him in absentia.
so just be thank you thank you dj so that i don't lose my job professor not doctor professor gwena magaku now because he's not in i will request uh, dr willis oyeko to receive this gift uh, this award on his behalf let's appreciate dr willis as he comes and to give this award to give this award i will welcome dr wayne obura to present this award to the best teacher in preclinicals or because edwin you must be a guambo let me shake your hand yeah, a guambo yes a combo will give this award thank you so much the best teacher preclinicals is going to dr ngwena uh, professor ngwena magak thank you so much the next award the next award goes to remember these awards were voted to uh, voted for by you right so uh i i, ho I hope iebc we are doing a good job the next award goes to the best teacher in clinicals and this award goes to none other than dr marwa let's appreciate dr marwa now because dr marwa is not in today i will request dr dare to kindly receive this gift on his behalf let's appreciate dr dare To give this award, I will invite Dr. Enoch Muli to present this award to Dr. Marwa in absentia. When you see a doctor in a full suit, know that money is there. Money is there. Uh, take a good shot. Thank you so much. The next award category is called the Distinguished Mentor. You all know who this is, right? You voted, Buana. This goes to none other than Dr. Dr. Opondo. Let's appreciate Dr. Opondo. And to give this award, I will invite Dr. Kevin Oyugi to award Dr. Opondo. Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing at Dr. Dr. Kevin Oyugi? You see, this is the next uh, president of this country. You, you don't joke. We'll have a doctor president. Obama Buana. Okay, nice. So that is uh, the distinguished mentor. Distinguished mentor will receive another another flower. You you give another flower. She is the mentor of flowers. Thank you so much. Clap until she sits down, Buana. Adia kai chini. Thank you so much. You have amazing lecture, as I say. To manage to cycle, na DJ, we will increase your pay. Amazing. So we are going to the next category. We are going to the category of our guests. So to award one of our guests, uh, the keynote speaker himself, none other than. Why is silent? Dr. Bita. Let's appreciate Dr. Bita. You did dance last time. Now dance. You did dance. Where is the tube? You are hungry. No worries. Now to award this gift, uh, we are inviting Dr. Eugene Toby. Dr. Eugene Toby. Dr. Eugene Toby, please come while you are dancing, please. Toby, Toby, Toby. Everybody say Toby, 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 Toby. Toby. 
Toby, 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 Toby. The next award and gift category is going to none other than our chief guest. And our chief guest is uh, none other than Professor Yana McLeod. Did I get your name right? Oh, nice. Awesome. To give this award, to give this award is going to be none other than Dr. O'Neill Wamukota. Wait, could you dance to Padani? Aya, DJ. Aya. Wamukota, come, 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 come. Nice one. This one is a doctor and a half. Just see how he's dancing. If there's anything you need, all you have to do I'm is say, oh, you Thank you so much to our chief guest. Everything in me, you shouldn't waste a single day. So don't stop me falling, it's destiny calling, a power I just can't deny. On to the next category. DJ, this is now the category for students. Are you ready? Are you ready? Before we go to the official categories, I asked you, who was the naughtiest in this lot? You didn't tell me. <laughs> I asked you, who was the most disciplined? You didn't tell me. Now I want to add another one. Who is the most religious doctor in here? Now, we'll go to the first category, which is the best academician male. Now, to award this category, I will invite our chief guest. Please come back. Don't get tired. Yeah, we have dinner waiting after this. Uh, I, will in, I will invite our chief guest to award this category. We will do both male and female for the best academician male now. None other than... Ignatius Kipsang. Let's appreciate Ignatius Kipsang. Academician, you see they, they put on this these things on the on the eyes. Eh? You see academicians put on these things. You see those Googles? Yeah, those are academicians. I, I just forgot mine home. Thank you so much. Now we go to the female category. And the best academician female. Just be sure she's putting on Googles. It's none other than... Daphne Mora! Let's appreciate Daphne Mora! As she comes, I told you, she's putting on Google. We know them. We know them. Now, because you're putting on Google, please dance for us. DJ. Nice one. Ah, yeah. Doctory, doctory, doctory. Come on, to na lilim shinda adam wa kashinda kuhumiya sakoni mitu ikabibi na muni na nyongo itatu. Okay, ona kana mission na mewa Google. Don't even ask questions. Karibu sana. I'll request you to move this way, kidogo. Just move this way for for the camera. Move move this way. Yeah, it's okay.
Thank you so much. Sound testing one, two. We are going to the next category, uh, which is the outstanding organizer. Before I mention this person, before I tell you the name of this person, look at the person sitting next to you. If they are putting on blue, that's not them. <laughs> now, to award this category, I will invite our keynote address, keynote speaker, to give these awards for this category. Now, please, if you're putting on blue, please forgive me. Please don't, don't come after me when we are having dinner. I come in peace. Now, the, the, the outstanding organizer is none other than Patricia Ann. Wait, 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 wait. DJ, come in style, please. Organizer, no masana. I told you they were not putting on the blue. Aya, aya, aya. This slide is messing me up. I can't even do my IBC work in peace. Most outstanding class leader. We have a Guambo. He was a dance. Uh, a Guambo is the name of Raila Bana. <laughs> On a light note. Uh, he was a dentist, dentistry rep in fifth year. Author rep for the group two. And then we also have Anne nominated uh, group leader. Also committee chair, committee member. We also have Anne again. Onel Wamukota, Medsam president. Uh, I think that is Msake editorial. Committee, chair, president, council. Hey. Respect. Steering committee major. Hey. Peace M, exec sec. Hey. SNO, PRO. Hey. <laughs> FAMSA editorial. Bwana, you are finishing leadership, Bwana. So, this is none other than... Onel Wamukota. Let's appreciate him. Oh, keynote speaker, please come back. Please come back. Everybody telling me to... Everybody telling me to go. Oh. Well, everybody telling me to go oh, on oh, all over America. Oh, everybody telling me to oh, Everybody telling me to oh, well, everybody telling me to oh, an outstanding class all leader over indeed. America. Because we the first time I met him was in a peace campaign. He's doing a lot. I saw him in in, U in Europe by Yugoslavia when I was traveling to India. This guy is doing a lot. But still manages to be a doctor. But you should give me some of your skills. Now, we want to award the best sports person. Before I tell you who among these people is the winner, you know, try and imagine their physique in your mind. Take a mental picture. Take the snap, snap shot. Now, now, before before we tell you who who this is, you guys voted. But I want to tell you something. These people are having qualities that you do not want to imagine. Consistency for them to get the physique, yeah. Determination, you know. And this goes to none other than Mutuku Brian. Let's see the sportsman in him. To give this award, to give this award, sorry, sir, I didn't tell you to stand here until we are done. 
I apologize on behalf of all this class of 2023. Please give this award, this is the last one for sure. To the best sports person. And I chose rugby. And as a queen, I even know you will go up. Amazing. Thank you, sir. Now we go to the next category. We, yes, sir. We are almost done. Uh, the last category for awards is going to. Sorry, we want to go back to the male and female class reps. Oh, we started with academicians, you know, those who put on Googles. I told you I forgot mine at home. But we are going now to class reps because they have done amazing work for the last uh, six, seven years. So the, the, this award goes to an outstanding uh, class rep, male. Let's start with male. Yeah, because he's the, he's the only one, you, you didn't have to vote. Can we put our hands together? Can we put our hands together for Oyugi Kelvin? Please dance, please dance. Now, to give this award, I will invite Dr. Oyeko to come and give this award to him. Dr. Oyeko, you can show us one move. You see, we got one move there. Thank you so much, Dr. Yeko. Please don't go back. Thank you so much, Dr. Ari. You can have your seat. Now, on special request, the class rep, female, is requesting the honor of the chief guest to award this to her. Let's appreciate the chief guest as she comes. And then DJ, to we can go my uh, class rep, female, Irene Auma Daktari. For that, you can go and go climax. Please capture that. We will show her after 10 years when she is now a, a doctor. I Uh, this last section Before we give the last awards I want to invite our chief guest back to stage and uh, all the class representatives and on behalf of the dean also invite uh, Dr. Bita. Please come come forward. We want to there is a cake that was made for the class of 2023 and we want to invite you to do the honors of cutting the cake. Our chief guest please come. Let's appreciate them. 
and we can give them some good music. Some good music. You know how to dance that one. As we say that you stua. As we bring the cake, as we bring the cake, you can manage, you can still manage. As we bring the cake, Now, this is the class rep and the, the chief guest and the keynote address, keynote speaker. They will help us cut the cake and uh, the rest of you are uh, the farthest end of the room. In Swahili we say utakula kwa macho. But you'll sure get a bite of the same. It looks amazing. So I will invite the cameraman to take some nice pics of it. He wants to take a very good uh, angle. So you'll allow him before we, before we dismantle it, before we swallow. Just take the photos for the gram. It's okay. It's allowed. Who else feels that they should be in this photo? You are allowed. Just walk in and, and combat them. Now, uh, we are waiting for the knife. You need, you, you need to look at the camera person and you smile. Nice. class rep. Amazing. Now we will be helped with the host, Sarova. Then we will cut it and then everyone will get a bite. This cake was imported from South Africa. It arrived yesterday. And it is still very fresh. God is good. Them say, them tell you say. Say you can never be the one. God say, make I tell you say. Say now you him choose in one month, in one week. The cake is courtesy of Sarova Hotel Kisumu. So we want to see the chief guest. Class rep and Apatia keynote speaker. You can see the keynote speaker. Let's see how, how small the mouth is. You know? We can see how small the mouth is. He says that he eats very little. I hope you capture that on camera. Let's appreciate him. Amazing. So we'll request uh, 
we request Kelvin to give uh, the chief guest. Ah, yeah. The chief guest is testing the cake. So I didn't know about my own Amazing. Capture that on camera. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah, you get to take the whole plate. We can give you this one too. Amazing. So as they take away the cake, we. We want to invite one representative from Cosmos. As the cake goes around, we will invite one representative from Cosmos to give this lab coat to our doctors. And we will go in terms of numbers. So, a representative from Cosmos. We will go in numbers and uh, uh, as we say, the finalists, you know your numbers from number 1 to 10. We will go very fast in this last section. Number one to ten. So we'll start with number one. Kutoi Dennis, please. When I call your name, you, you run like uh, we are in a military camp. Because we are just chasing time so that you don't have your dinner very late. Let's appreciate him, Tafadali. Let's appreciate him. Please clap until it is your turn. So that we are clapping for you too. Get ready after Kutoi Dennis, we will have Oyuki Kevin. Oyuki Kevin, please be online. After Oyuki Kevin, we have number three, Kosasia, Oneil Wabukota. After Wabukota, we have number four, Otsula. Frida Holin, Frida Holin, then Kitavi, Frida Holin, then Kitavi, just come in that order, then Ali Dan, Ali Adan, Sila. Make sure you, you face the camera person so that we capture that moment. After Omuka Sila, we have uh, Samson Emekwi. Samson Emekwi. After Samson, we have Kipsang, Ignatius. Ignatius Kipsang. After Ignatius, we have last Kiprono Reni. Kiprono Reni. Kiprono Reni will be the last awarded by Cosmos. from Cosmos, then we'll invite one person from Kisumu Specialist to give the following award. Thank you, sir. Now 
very good. Okay, super specialist. And the super specialist will give from uh, 11 to 20. In line, we have Daya Violet C. Lewis. <laughs> After Daya Violet, we have Bet Jeptuba Masi. Bet Jeptuba Masi. And then we have Kiprono Collins. Please make sure you look at the camera person. Kiprono Collins. After Kiprono, we have Hilary Alfred Omolo. Please smile at the camera. Smile at the camera. We have Hilary Alfred Omolo. After that, we have Nanjala Angela Murunga. Nanjala Angela Murunga. Then we have Barare Enoch Bendere. Please smile at the camera. Barare. And by the way, you just feel free to dance when you are coming. Feel I, I hope you don't mind dancing. Felix Pius Omulo. Felix Pius Omulo. After Felix, we have Kiprotit Felix. The two Felixes are following each other like that, yeah? After Felix, we have uh, Brian Baraka John. Brian Baraka John. Smile at the camera, please. Sometimes I'm happy, sometimes I'm sad. Brian Baraka John. Is the last one being awarded by Kisumu Specialist. After that, we will invite somebody from KMA Sako. KMA Sako to our. Thank you so much, Kisumu Specialist. Dr. Mapesa, thank you so much. I will invite uh, our guest from KMA Sako to come and give the next category. Our guest from KMA Sako. To award this next category, we will have number one is Adam Osman. Adam Osman. You can come dancing, man. This is your day. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. After Adam Osman, we will have Oko Emma Masi. Oko Emma Masi. Please smile at the camera. The cameraman has been given a lot of cakes. You guys are confusing my cameraman with the cake. Oko Masi, Emma. Oko Emma Masi. After that, we have Juma Emmanuel Wango. Juma Emmanuel Wango. Followed closely with Omondi Francis Aguambo. After Aguambo, we have Enoch Mbuva Muli. Muli, you will relax. You will, you will wait for your time. Then we have Wachie Wanyoni Alex. Wachie, Wachie, Wanyoni, Alex. Yes, Alex. Alex. After Alex, we have Dafin Mora Nyabuto. Dafin Mora Nyabuto. Dafin Mora Nyabuto. Best academician. 
I remember you because of your Google. After Mora, we have Oduor Eugene Ouma. Oduor Eugene Ouma. And then we have Masika Alan Wanyonyi. Masika Alan Wanyonyi. After Masika Alan Wanyonyi, we have. Jacqueline Wanji, Wanjiku Kitiji. Jacqueline Wanjiku. This is the last one being awarded by Kebe Sako. Then I will invite Square Pharmaceuticals to give the next category. Square Pharmaceuticals, please thank you so much, uh, KMA Sako. Square Pharmaceuticals now gives this category. The next group is, uh, will we begin with Bernard Munyao Mutua? Bernard Munyao Mutua. Bernard Munyao Mutua, followed closely with uh, Adan Ali. Adan Ali. Followed closely with uh, Kipchumba Consolata J. Please make sure you are smiling at the cameraman. Make sure you are smiling at the cameraman. Oh, we are waiting for the cameraman. Just a little help break. You can enjoy your cake. Don't finish for us. We are here. Brian and I are here. Thank you so much, and thank you so much. You take you you you, you are a, you are an organizer. We have seen. But will you stop standing in your own way? Yeah. Abdi Rizak. Smile at the camera. The road you're taking only leads you to. Followed closely by Kiptumba Consolata J. Smile at the cameraman. Followed closely by Emmanuel K. Chelule. Emmanuel K. Chelule. Followed by Khatija Mohammed Shamshuddin. Khatija Mohammed Shamshuddin. If I didn't bite my tongue, I will never bite my tongue. Khadija. After Khadija, we have Mohammed Ahmed Sheikh. Mohammed Ahmed Sheikh. Followed closely by Odenyo Stella Anyango. Odenyo Stella Anyango. Smile at the cameraman. You can also smile at the camera. If you don't like the cameraman. Odenyo Stella Anyango. Followed by Anthony Okot Olango. Thank you so much, Square Pharmaceuticals. And we go to the next award. Uh, we will begin. We'll begin with uh, Kangwana Elvin Mangara. Kangwana Elvin Mangara. And to award this category or this group, I will invite Hampton Hospital, a representative to come and give this award. Followed by Achieng Okundi, Lin Achieng Okundi. Followed closely by Vivian Nanjala. Bago Vivian Nanjala. Followed closely by Laura Anyango Oweke. In that order. Bago, please smile. Smile with the cameraman. The other camera. Laura Anyango Oweke. Followed by Kosgei. 
story because gay you can you can wait. Lorin Ruth Nyakundi. Lorin Ruth Nyakundi. After Lorin we will have Stacy. Jeff Kemboy Limo. Stacy. Jeff Kemboy Limo. After Stacy we will have Morema Cynthia. Morema Cynthia. Smile with the cameraman. Stacy, Jeff Boy Limo. After Morema, we will have Ricky Felix Kwai. Ricky Felix Kwai. Ricky Felix Kwai. Please smile at the cameraman. After Ricky Felix, Kezia Akini. After Kezia Akini, we will have Makabu Mohamed Bari. Makabu Mohamed Bari. Makabu. Thank you so much, Hampton. Thank you. Now the last category. I think the 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 cake has given us a lot of sugar rush. People are talking. Now we are having a last category, and I want to I want to invite I want to invite the committee, and I want all of them to come in front. The committee that made sure that this event was organized and successful. All of you, come at the same time. All of you, please, I, want, I just want the camera person to take a photo of If you know you are a committee member, please come in front. Go on, go committee members, let's save on time. Leave me breathless. Now it is you guys between us and uh, Nina. Look at the amazing committee members. Look at that. Look at the doctors. Look at that. Look at that. Look at the attire. Upper, this is where we say money is there. Money is there. What is money? What is money? Take a nice photo of this committee. This is the committee that has made sure that we are here today and the finalist dinner 2023 happened. I smile with the cameraman. Uh, one more, one more, one more in the picture. Now to give them their gifts before they go back, I will invite the KMA delegates. I know the KMA delegates are here that have not given any award. Dr. Freezer, kindly come and give uh, part of the committee their award. Dr. Freezer, kindly. Let's appreciate Dr. Freezer, Tafadali. You will give the first three. And then after you, I will invite uh, Dr. Okelo, who will give the next three. The organizing committee, you will give the first three. And then we have Anne Patricia. Anne Patricia. The most organizing. Please smile at the camera. Then we have Otieno, Dr. Otieno. Dr. Otieno, in Kisumu you don't throw stones. You may hit a doctor. You may hit a surgeon. 
You may you may hit an orthopedic. The next one to award is Dr. Okelo. Dr. Okelo, kindly please give come and give the next three. We have Dr. Irene. Dr. Irene. Thank you. Smile at the cameraman. Thank you for being an amazing committee member. Dr. Masi Koske. Smile at the camera. Thank you so much, Doctor. Dr. Dr. Johnson Mosetti, kindly. Kindly come and give the next award. Dr. Oyugi. Dr. Oyugi, aka Obama. Baba. Baba. And then we have Dr. Dr. Enoch Muli. Suti, Suti, Suti. What is money? Now, by the power vested in me by Barack Obama, the MC will award the next two awards. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the tail end of our program and I just want to appreciate all of you for being very good during the whole program. As I hand over the microphone to the person who is going to do the vote of thanks, that is none other than Tim Brand. I was your host and MC. My name is Nelson Asira and I'm glad that I took medicine with water in Masen University. May God bless all of you. Karibu Team Brand. Good evening, everyone. Finalists, hoi. Hey, finalists, hoi. Uh, I know we, we are, we've been here for a while, and uh, we are eager to finish up and get to chatting and, you know, enjoying the rest of the evening. So I want to start by congratulating the finalists of the year 2023. You guys are awesome. You guys are amazing. Um, and I'm speaking on behalf of the juniors who are, you know, most are watching right now. And some are looking up to you guys. Some, you know, have had you guys as mentors and I've seen you guys go through the years, us included. Uh, personally, I've got to know you guys for the last five or so years. We've got to work with each other. We've got to, you know, learn from you guys. And it has been an amazing five years getting to know you and getting to work with you guys. Getting to work with the likes of Enoch Muli in fellowship. Getting to work with the likes of Karen Muraria. Uh, Baba over there, Oyugi. Um, Barare, Karen, uh, Karen Muraria, I've mentioned you. MK and the rest. 
uh, Anne Patricia, the organizing committee chairperson. You guys have been amazing over the years. You have been more than friends. You've got to have brothers from this class, the likes of Aguambo Francis. And uh, it's really amazing that I've gotten to know you guys, and I'm sure that the people who are following are really looking up to you guys. Um, it's an honor really being also part of medical school and being you know, seniors leaving medical school because as we've learned from the people who have spoken to us today is that we get to learn from the experiences of those who are ahead of us. We get to hear from stories of people who are ahead of us and from those stories we make our life choices and we make our decisions. And I'm really glad that today as finalists you got that small experience from the people who have spoken, who have provided you guys with mentorship at this moment, the guests who have given you bits of wisdom, and I believe that it's really going to impact you moving forward. And so I would like to slightly break protocol in thanking the people who are the chief guests 2.0, that is the finalists who are here today, who are the reason why we are here celebrating today, and we would all want to just appreciate uh, all the finalists, so I know most of us, if not all of us, are finalists here. So I'd like to take this chance to just ask us to clap for ourselves. I would also really like to thank the organizing committee that has been able to put all this together for us today. I know it's not an easy or it's not a mere feat organizing such an event reaching out to sponsors, reaching out to you know individuals to come as guests and people to partner with you to bring you the kind of event you have had today. It really takes a lot. It has taken a lot of sacrifice. It has taken a lot of effort and time. And those are the people who have made today a success. So we'd really like to thank the organizing committee for the amazing work that you have done today. We, we really appreciate you guys. Also, we would really like to thank our lecturers and uh, you know the faculty in the School of Medicine for not just attending today and being part of the event, but also always being there whenever we need your support. I know sometimes uh, you'll always get phone calls asking you, Doc, we have this and this we want you to support, or Doc, we have this and this we want you to come on board. And we are really grateful that you do not tire to come to our aid when we need you. You do not tire when we reach out for you to come and speak to some of us. And so we are really grateful for your presence and for the support you've been giving the students and especially this finalists class for the last six years that they have been here. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much for Dr. Opondo, Dr. Okello, for the wonderful words of wisdom that you gave us. Thank you, Dr. Bita, Dr. Okello, for, uh, sorry, Dr. Oyeko, for being here today and the wonderful bits of wisdom you've given us. Again, we really appreciate the wonderful things that you're doing for us and in extension for the whole Masano University School of Medicine. Also, I would like to extend a very, very uh, hearty gratitude to our guests who have spoken today. You have given us immense words of wisdom. I was sitting over there and I was just taking note of the things that were being said. And I'm hoping that the finalists who are here have been able to, you know, at least, if not document, store them in your memory. Or if you're able to take a mental picture, take a mental picture because I think those things are very vital. And some of the words that you've received today, I believe, will have an impact in your life. And so I want to thank all the guys who have spoken today all the guests who have been able to give wisdom to our finalists about life after you know leaving this place, beginning internship and practice outside. We really appreciate you for taking the time to come and speak to our seniors, taking the time to come and speak and give them the wisdom because as it stands, we are looking up to them and when they go out there and make an impact, we know that as we follow them, we are also going to make the same impact. So we really appreciate you for your words of wisdom. And uh, there's one thing I, I, I caught uh, that Dr. Jane Nandro mentioned. You mentioned that you know Kenyan medics are very smart. But one thing I always want to believe is that 
Maseno medics are amazing. And Dr. Sheila mentioned it, that Maseno medics are, when you go out there, you guys are awesome. And we want to, make, we want to believe that even as our seniors and our finalists leave, they're going to continue and set the bar higher for those of us who are following them. So thank you so much for our speakers and guests for the amazing you know, words that you've given us. Uh, I also want to thank our sponsors uh, for today's event. Uh, we really thank you because it is because of your support and your partnership that we've been able to put all this up together today. So I'd really like to thank all our partners and our sponsors from Cosmos Pharmaceuticals, Kisumu Specialists, Kisumu Heart Center, Square Pharmaceuticals, K. Mesako, and Hamptons Hospital for the amazing support you have given us today and for the last few months that we've been engaging you to make this event a success. Thank you for coming on board. Thank you for always being there to support us and listening to us when you send you emails, when we send you phone calls, when we organize for meetings. And we really implore you that you may continue working with us as Maseno University School of Medicine, continue partnering with us to make sure that we continue, you know, making sure that the generations that are coming continue to benefit from such things that we are organizing. We also want to really thank um, our MC of the day. Thank you for making it very lively. Um, I have been to uh, other finalist dinners, but I must say that there's something about this class. Okay? There's something about this class, the energy in the room, the vibrance that we have, the, you know, the, the fun and that feeling of family and, you know, celebration as you finish your six years today. And uh, I want to thank you guys for having that much energy and, you know, bringing that zeal today as you celebrate. Thank you, Mr. MC, for guiding us throughout the, the, the program today. Uh, thank you to the hotel for, you know, taking part and, you know, giving us this amazing venue, planning for us. We really appreciate. And uh, in absentia, I would like to thank the Dean of the School of Medicine for, you know, giving the support whenever he was called upon, and the school at large for the wonderful support they've given us in organizing for this. So I would really like to thank all of us, finally, and to thank God for enabling this event to close as a success, and to close by telling our finalists, um, I, I know that you guys are leaving right now and starting hopefully tomorrow or Monday after a certain meeting, uh, we are going to be calling you our alumni, right? Yes, we are going to be calling you our alumni, all of you who are seated here today, Sindio. Yes, and one thing I request of you as the leader that you are leaving behind for the people we are leaving behind is that do not forget where you have come from. Sawa sawa. Do not forget the six years you have been here and the, the association that you have been with, the students that you are leaving behind. Do not forget them. We will be you know, reaching out to you to come back, speak to the young ones, support wherever you can, bring us the networks that you are able to build, bring us the connections that you are able to find because we know that you are going to succeed out there. Sawa sawa. So, pass down some of those blessings and successes to the young ones so that they also get to benefit from the things you're benefiting from. Sao Sao. So we really want to thank you so much, uh, our soon-to-be alumni. And uh, I really want to thank all of us for taking the time to listen to me, blabber for at least five minutes. I know food is uh, right there next to be served. But thank you so much for this wonderful event. And uh, have a great remaining part of the party. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tim. <laughs> you know, when you call a doctor to give a vote of thanks, they will dissect and do surgery and make sure that everyone has been thanked. Thank you so much. I now want to call without further ado, I swear, I promise, Dr. Albert to give us a closing prayer before we go for our meals. Are you now happy with me? Dr. Albert, please come and pray. Why are you laughing at Albert? Doctor, why are they laughing? 
Uh, how are you? One, I'm not yet a doctor. It's still a little bit longer journey. But they are family. But before I pray, I know you are surprised that Albert and Aomba. I'm a man of God. God is all new to water. <laughs> but I'll just say one thing. Is, uh, one is to tell you that I love you and I thank you for the love that you showed, for, you showed to me. And in that, I wish you all the best in life. May you continue spreading the love that you showed to Albert. And may you spread the love to the patients and to your communities. Mungo Wabariki, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we present, we present ourselves before you, thanking you for the gift of life, and more so thanking you for the journey that you've walked with this class, who are great people, that as they go into practicing their profession as doctors, that Father, you may be able to work with them in each and every aspect in their career, as well as, well as in the, to their future in general. Heavenly Father, as they take this first meal as doctors in your name, I pray that you may bless, may it be a blessing to their bones, to their health, and to their life, and to their future. For it is in Jesus' name I pray this prayer, trusting and believing. Barikiwe. Uh, as, we, as we get some music, we will request all of us to allow our guests to serve first. And uh, that will be our chief guest, our keynote uh, speaker, and the table, and all our sponsors. Please, let's allow them to serve first. Then we can go after them. Is that okay? As that happens, we will invite uh, a presentation from Enoch Barare. He will do that as... It is not the presentation you are thinking. It's a story. It's a story. So I will invite Barare to come as the, as the guests are serving. I will invite Barare for a story. For a story. Let our guests serve first. Uh, our sponsors. Barare Banaibu Dance Ukikuja Bwana. Bwana Daktari. Dance with us, dance with us. Come see me to take my eyes off you. Especially a bite and move. Hello. Good evening. Good evening again. Umefrai. Uh, when, when Brian was saying that uh, I'll make a presentation, when Brian was saying I'll make a presentation. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm saying, when Brian was saying that I'll make a presentation the other day, when we had a meeting, I thought he was joking. So, <laughs> I'm in a surprise. Eh? But I'm always prepared to speak any time I'm called upon. So, I have a small story. I don't see stories on as such. <laughs> it's um, something that happened to me while I was in my year four. Uh, for those who have rotated it, I made, I believe everybody except some of the juniors I'm seeing around. You know one, Professor Njabundi, is it Professor Njabundi? Yes. The HOD internal medicine. Eh? So, there's a time when we were doing our rotations in fourth year. I think it was my second rotation. And um, kulikuwa na strike. Kulikuwa na, I think it was uh, strike ya healthcare workers. Eh? So there were very few patients during that time. And if you go to Professor Nyabuni's ward round and you don't have a new patient, you present an old patient, you will be in trouble. You will call it nonsense. <laughs> So the other day, I got from my house <coughs> in Milimani. <laughs> I came to hospital. It was on Sunday. Yeah, it was on Sunday around around 10 a.m. I wanted to get a, a new patient. Eh? So that time it was the ground floor in medical ward. The last room. Ukomu isho kabisa. I walked in. Your time, you're going to be very sad. Kidogo too. 
kiburi kidogo ile ya kiburi house so i walked in bouncing because my second rotation I, i was thinking i was i was thinking I, i'm a doctor already and i was just a fourth year so i walked in i got some patients she was in she was in coma but the the caretaker was not around and i really wanted to collect that patient because i think there were three there were three new patients in the ward two had been collected by our 60 years one was remaining i even remember those 60 years they, are, they were my mentors when i was in fourth year one was called uh, uh, derrick omoga the other one is called um, rollins Ro- Ro- akongo yeah those two they were very serious guys walikuwa church kwa wawili So there was one remaining. I think well yachana nae because that lady was in coma. Ilikuwa female ward. So mimi nikasema huyu nitatulia tulia hapa. Nikingoja nikingoja kiateka. So ikafika 11 AM 12 1 eh sioni kiateka. And then around after 30 minutes around 1:30 when I went back I saw some lady akibadilisha diaper. So mimi nikaingia tu na kiburi yangu. Nevaa lab coat. Nevaa stethoscope. Niko na kalamu, niko na clock sheet. So I I told that lady in fact when I was coming in let me assume this is the our cameraman is the lady. <laughs> so while I was coming in akaniambia eh barare umekuja u clock. Niko ambia eh I've been looking for the caretaker to this patient. Where were you? <laughs> I mean, I was not around but I've just come. So just give me a few minutes. I finish uh, changing the diaper and then maybe you'll come to to take the history. The lady was still in coma. I remember yes. So I told her so I couldn't wait there in Lakumbalisha. I told that I didn't know who it was eh? so I just knew probably maybe ni caretaker, maybe ni sister from home, maybe ni aunt maybe ni mtu alimokota kwa barabara yeah, something like that so nikamwambia ukimaliza kumbadilisha ukuje huko doctor's room kwa around room 6 <laughs> so mimi nikarudi doctor's room nikangoja the caretaker kuja nipatie history so after I, like 5 uh, minutes she came nilikuwa nimekaa kwa hizo benches eh? unakuwa na bench hapo na hiyo meza kubwa kama mnakumbuka before waambisha kwenda hapo juu so mimi nilikuwa nilikuwa hapo na kalamu yangu nataka kuchukua history ya kupresentia nyabundi tuesday so the lady came she sat next to me wenye naweza kuwa wenye mmekaa tu hivyo just next pamoja yeah so biodata chief complaint if complain loss of consciousness for one day <laughs> to kangia hpi to kapiga hpi to kapiga hpi to kangia family history hizo vitu zote so hiyo <clears throat> wakati wa kunipatia the history taking that time eh? alikuwa ananipatia alikuwa ilikuwa ina flow you can imagine ukipata beta kupatia history to not be the same like you know, Oh if Dr Bita gives you history. Ima zayana si mzuri. It will not be the same like if you get um maybe you are a high school teacher maybe anybody's not an anemic utajua kuna something different eh? So the history from this lady ilikuwa ina flow sana. Yaani mzuri 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 kuja tu mzuri mzuri. And then akaniambia akaniambia at some point that he, This patient she passed urine on herself. I decided to educate her. I'm going to be in continents. <laughs> and uh, some few and and come educate some few medical terminologies. Me I didn't know who she was. So we proceeded the history and the patient seems very happy. And I was concerned, eh who is this? Kwa sababu history na flow sana. So nikamuliza eh and who are you by the way? <laughs> Akanambia don't worry. Why are you asking? I'm just asking because asiku mwambia I just Right. 
So I asked who are you because I was wondering who is this he is the way pata mtu amenipatia history na nilikuwa nimetoka Ops guy and I was in my second week in IMED and I was just wondering this one kuna difference hapa So akaniambia ukikuja pediatrics you will know me <laughs> So ndio kitu ka ring kwa akili yangu eh atukiingia pia tutanijua So who is this nika nika shuku maybe maybe ni some maybe staff something like that mwenye me notice simjui so ilikuwa na sunday the intern in that time walikuwa anaitwa dr babu alikuwa tu hapo nje kwa corridors medical ward so when you the lady alitoka tu nje nika pata intern hapo nje nikamuuliza eh nime clerk some lady hapa na sim Mungu ni nani? Eh fodi Elisha Elisha haraka sana. <laughs> And then maybe another I don't know. Sije kama how many of you have a that chance. That was a chance ya kuklaka consultant ama any medic any medic. Eh? You know some of you have clerked medics. Maybe a nurse, maybe a health officer. In 60 I also had a chance of clerking a, a medical officer <laughs> in pediatrics. I think uh, Kezia was there and uh, Osman the doctor from CIA who had a baby with necrotizing and tracholiitis <laughs> and that one yo sasa I think from the first encounter I had with um, Dr Grace I learned one thing that you never you can't know who you meet when you are <coughs> handling a patient eh? yeah so ile kiburi yangu ya ku approach watu ni kama I know a lot of things kapunguza kidogo so kabadilisha badilisha venye naongelesha watu and i think uh, that has that has helped me through my third my fourth year fifth year and sixth year yeah that's my short presentation you can clap for me <laughs> thank you thank you for listening to me Nelson hmm. Nelson where are you Umeingia mitini Okay um we shall still have presentations from the class it's your day So anyone with a presentation you can uh, move forward Um I think um I can say one thing or two Um when Dr Victor was handing me the award He said he did not trust um that I'm the best sportsman. So um uh, maybe um I've been the captain of the class team. I've been the captain of the School of Medicine football team. I captained it when we won the interfaculty against those people who usually play every day. Yeah we come from class and we we beat them despite their practice yeah um uh, yeah so i think you you see now that it was deserved um finalist you can proceed in uh to serve uh in the meantime um we shall play some video of uh, you guys from your earlier years
You can see our best academician. <laughs> Thank you. 